broadcasting on the radio. They gotta listen to the small driver show. It's not on. Well, you see, Mr. Golden Numbers, they said, oh, that the island was dead, old mean people was dead, and uh, I had a regular antenna, I didn't know what I was doing. They said all matter of things. They had all these stuff others that don't even have a base station making comments on uh, my demise on that end. But right about now, before the year 2009, there will be a whole bunch of cat mayors on the railroad tracks. So go to numbers. If they think they want to do something with the Ohio just tell them the migration has begun. I can have my star glasses on, my mink coat with my flip flops. And I can do some pimping around the Waffle House. Hello, Mr. The hammer hits hard! There's a little good station, so I can get out of the way. Some squeaker down here just trying. My little bitty station down here. Where I'm A Super Bowl operator, not the cheerleaders and the sideline spectators. They call us band gators, cause we chew haters, and we detect leaders from 10 to 80 meters. You hams can't beat us, but the bowl is getting cooked. Survival of the fittest, now they selling wolf tickets. The handle rustlers, britches, dusters, some cuss when they get beat. They hating at defeat, and in the cheap seats, them ducks don't compete. Just rooting for their friends with pal talk critiques. And watch out for self proclaimed ducks. They claim to be a duck. With 30 bushels in a truck. <laughs> 30 What's going bushels on? in the truck. <laughs> what 20 bushels? 20 bushels over there in the truck. What's going on? How you doing, 413? What's up? What's up, Mr. Jimmy Swagger? Welcome, welcome, brother. How you doing, welcome, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good. All is well, man. All is well. What uh what all did you what all did you had going on today? What was the skip looking like out there on the on the bowl today? Well, you know, we're in Florida, so Skip was Skip was all over the place pretty good, man. I had a lot of a lot of California, a lot of Colorado crack up there, you know, in the Evergreens, uh had a little bit of Michigan skip. I haven't gotten any in the Northeast skip yet, but I'm um, looking forward to that. But it was a pretty good day, man. Uh, you know, everybody else has different skip, different regions. So but down here in Florida, that's what I got, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was sitting and I, I had a news glimpse come across and up there, I guess it's uh Palestine, Ohio, man, prayers out to them people in that small community in that small town up there, you know, with all that chemical and all the stuff they've been yeah. dealing with up there, that man, it blew my mind. I did. I, I pulled up the uh, little read on it and I was going through there and I was like, I just the news. I, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even really hear about this. This happened like the, uh, like, like on the third or the fourth. I mean, and now we're where we are. I mean, all that time passed and I was like, I was like, wow. I said, I didn't see anything, you know, about this until just recently. So prayers out to them people and, uh, you know, passing through all that. For sure. For sure, man. For sure, man. Uh, welcome. Out. I just want to welcome everybody. This is the third edition uh, Big Hammer Show. We're getting everything squared away. Just bear with us. You know, YouTube channel. We're going to have phone lines in the next couple of weeks. So you guys will be able to call in and give some in input. And uh, <laughs> Donald Fulch just said we both... Both of us came from the same eggs. <laughs> I want to give a shout out. Donald, who, Donald Fulcher said y'all ducks came from the same eggs. <laughs> I, I see it. I see it. I see it. But I'm trying to figure out who he is, man. Do I know this guy? Put, yeah, yeah. Don't put your government name, man. Don't put your government name. Put your put your CV handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see a CV handle. You come up here with that, you know. So. Yeah, I, I got, I'm going to give a couple shout outs, man. Everybody that's joining in little by little, man, you know. Kind of give some everybody props. I see one, two, three. I see Tony Montana. Uh, who else? I see 148 out of New Jersey. Bonsenio out of New Jersey, one of the guys from the 26715 channel. Uh, uh, big shot out of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, track going master, on, Hawaii? Track master, shout out to the boys in Hawaii. Track master out of, out of the wheat fields. Uh, who else we got in here, man? One, two, three. Uh, 25 in the, in the in the corn, big man in the corn. We got new kid, uh, yellow cab, man. We got a whole bunch of guys joining in, man. And I uh, just want to shout y'all out and and welcome you guys to the show. It's gonna be a good one. We got some good guests lined up. Uh, um, but other than that, man, 
we're going to uh, – just a little rundown, man. We're going we're gonna to have – you know, in the past couple of weeks, we had some old-timers come in, some legends, some pioneers, and we're just trying to get a good feel of what the, the Super Bowl came from for the younger guys on the band, where the Super Bowl is now, and what these guys see in the future for the Super Bowl. Got anything to add to that, Jimmy? Yeah, that – you know, out – so much networking. I mean, I want everybody to know, I mean, man, we got day jobs, right? So everybody's got day jobs. The man, he's grinding, I'm grinding. But the networking, man, to keep this thing running and, and keeping the people involved in this on the backside, you know, it's uh, it's a lot. It's, it, it's way more than what I thought it was going to be easing off into it. So, you know, 413, I reached out to a couple guys this past week, and I was on the phone with a guy the other day. And uh, I mean, true pioneer, true, true pioneer, probably, you know, this guy goes back to 68, 69, 70. And really to conclude what we've been driving since we come here from day one was to gain the knowledge about the bowl, where the bowl come from and, you know, uh, what was taking place back then and stuff like that to let everybody kind of run back with us. So I reached out to, you know, a guy and the first thing out of that guy's mouth, that guy asked me, he said, man, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? <laughs> Damn. Right off the bat. Right, right off, off the bat. bat. Right <laughs> off the bat. Right. I mean, the guy said, hey, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? And I mean, you know, I said, listen, man, I said, I'm an independent voter. And I said, you know, I said, I have no shame. I said, I voted the last time. I said, I voted Republican. I said, you know, and uh, so we kick it and we do this and we go all through that, you know, and and after I hung the phone up, great guy, super great guy, but, you know, opinionated, which, hey, this hey, podcast or, you know, they drive on opinions, you know. So, all right. So we get through that. And, I, and I, I hung the phone up and I was like, wow. I was like, man, I'm just running a show. You know, I mean, I'm not I'm not here to sell a wolf ticket on about a Republican <laughs> or a damn Democrat or a damn uh, uh Oh, an independent, you know, I just want to know, do you want to be on our show and bring that knowledge that you got to That's our show? I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, you white, black, Puerto Rican, Democrat, ring, whatever. No, just let's talk radio. Let's <laughs> talk radio. Bring that, bring that shit to the table and let's talk radio. And then, you know, That's I was right. talking a little, I, I ran across another guy and, uh, man, this guy has brought so much to 27025. I mean, through the islands, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, I mean, the states, probably the kingdom, uh, everything. I mean, this guy has just brought a ton of stuff. And uh, uh, I said, hey, I said, uh, do you want to do you want to get in on this? And I said, you know, let me let me put you out there. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to get into that. And yeah, uh, I'm a ham guy. And I said, oh, man, here we go with this. <laughs> Mercy, you know, and and then we got into another long drug out story, and he's like, "How do you feel about hams and this?" And I said, "Man, if you got a hobby and you're involved in your hobby, man, that's your hobby. And to our hobby, we stick with the rules and we stay in our contained or confined area, you know, and we walk in our alleyways and we do what we do, right? You know, but I just, it's such a shame because four thirteen, there's so many people out there that bring so much to this game." Was from the Spanish side, from where it's from the 28, from the, it's, uh, the tracks all the way back to the bowl. There is a few keys that's still out there, man. And I want to get these guys involved, but it, it's going to definitely take some, some moving around. And it's going to – like like Lights Out in Philly says, he's behind the rock with the hammer cock. So you got to be like that kind of there for. Yeah, but, you know – this is a new venue. This is a new platform. You know, it's a little, it's it's kind of never really been done the way we do it. It's been done. Some guys do interviews and stuff, which is cool. I have nothing, I'm not knocking anybody, but we're, we're here to cut up. And Jimmy, you know, outside of power talk and talking on the bowl, you know, we cut up, have fun. So I could see where these old timers would be like, man, I don't know if I get on that show with Jimmy and 413, man. Uh, they might. They might put me in a trick bag or something like that, but it ain't like that. When we're actually doing a serious show, we're going to get to cutting up. Best believe, y'all, we couple shows down the, road, down the road when we get comfortable, we're going to cut up and we're going to rack kill. But right now we're just kind of easing up in there, getting getting some knowledge in here. We're going to have some good topics on antenna, antenna theory, you know, and bird going forward, bird going back. I mean, there's a plethora of uh, of questions, and, and, and I know you guys joining in. 
will give us some of that knowledge. I also want to give a shout out to Butter, Butter Boo, one of the females on the Super Bowl. Shout out to her. She's on there. Absolutely. I just I just seen her right there. Yeah. Bullet Bob, 350. Uh, Nighthawk, man, they keep coming in, man. I don't want to leave nobody out, but you'll be able to see your comments just wave. Uh, and most important, click like and share. And uh, you'll see your comments uh, in the front. But other than that, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for what the show's doing, where it's going. Um, we got a lot of good input, you know. And uh, uh, keep keep the comments coming. Keep the uh, um, all the questions, cause we'll eventually get to them, you know, like in future shows. If you have any questions uh, on amps or, or or watts, anything, anything, just bring it up. Twenty seven point zero two five related, and the guys on channel channel from channel twenty eight and uh, 15 and so on and so forth. You guys are more than welcome. You know, it is a big hammer show. We try to ex not exclusively do 27.025, but if you got a big hammer, come on down. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, there's there's nobody there's nobody really out. We want everybody. If you're, on, if you're on radio, period, this is for you. You know, this is its own thing. This is its own drive. And, and the dedication that we put behind this, you know, you know, through the week, I mean, it's it's just it's all to put the knowledge out there. It's all to keep Radio 100. Most anybody who knows me and I and I, I feel what you said, you know, because I had a lot of guys reach out and they said, hey, Jimmy, you're going to be like what you are in pal talk. <laughs> I said, listen, man, I said, this is a more professional platform. I said, listen, I said, we go into pal talk. We rat kill. We shoot the shit. We cut up. You know, I said, this right here is, man, we're, we're actually trying to like sew the quilt you know we're trying to like we're trying to like you know just keep radio solid to the 100 now i tell you if you're if if you're a duck okay if you're a duck and you get caught slipping you possibly might get cased up on this damn show if i got anything <laughs> to do with it i can't sit here and promise you that that, that won't happen okay you know so just stay on your P's and Q's. If you if you if you rolling big, if you strap big, then then hit big is all I can tell you. You know, because like he said, eventually we will get there. But you know, and like I say, we got a great we got a great team set up tonight. We uh, uh, shout out to the producer Bobby. Uh, yeah, shout yeah. out the Prime Minister uh, for 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 working with us on the music and being in uh, into the hobby period and making and making the hobby what it is today. So uh, shout out the, the kingdom, shout out to the Spanish guys, 26715, shout out to all them boys. Uh, like I say, shout out to all my friends on 28, the tracks, everybody, everybody out there that's with a radio, shout out to you. And uh, glad to have you up in here in the, in the, in the room with us and, and on the show with us. So like I say, your comments do not go unnoticed. Now, now you know, Vinny's a lot better with the comments than I am, but I'm set up now. Last week I was really, really pitiful, you know, but I got a little bit better stuff going on over here this week. But I can actually see some of the comments, so I'll try to help Vinny and work through the comments because you guys' comments, I mean, you you have such a big play in this with the comments. You have no idea. So I just want everybody to know that everybody's voice is counted in on this, and we will take it. Me and him do discuss it, and we do talk about it through the week. So yes, sir. big shout out to all y'all. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see uh, Showtime. I see Little Squirt. I see Controller, Stump Knocker. Man, a lot of people just joining in. Welcome again. Uh, we got a great show. Like I said, we got some great guests. Uh, what you want to do? You want you got something else to add, or you want to bring them guests back in right right away and just get cracking? No, nah, you know, I mean, we got we we got we got a lot. This is gonna be this is gonna be a big night. We know. I'm think I'm gonna. I think I think with the guests that one of the guests that we have in here tonight, we will be able to conclude of what we've been driving and what we base. Now, some of the viewers they might say, "Man, they're talking about that again." But when we started that, we cut a we cut a trench, we cut a canal, and I think with this with this with this gentleman, I think that we will be able to conclude and and kind of put a wrap on it. Now, I can tell you that. I can't I can't tell you sitting here behind this screen that me and you together working. I can't say that, hey, we, we started this and we're going to pin it down to 100 percent. And yeah. this is how the bowl was started. This is how the bowl was founded. I can't guarantee you that because me nor you was there. We was not back there talking on the radio in 1968, 70, early part of the 70s. So all we're doing is just trying to get the knowledge and somewhat gather it up and just make a conclusion out of it. And that's just pretty much where we're going to be. And then we're going to just take this thing to another level, you know? So yeah, absolutely, let's run and, with it. Let's go big and run. Let's take off. Yeah, man. And, and just like Jimmy said, you know, um, we're getting bits and pieces from every region. So let's say we get some information from the Northwest 
and you're situated in Florida, you're like, wait a minute, that's not how it started in Florida. We'll eventually get to the Southeast region, joining with the Northwest and the Northeast and so on and so forth. And you'll see it join together and how it all came together because everybody hears different stories on different, different regions. Just like today, I heard different parts of the country and skip. I heard, you know, Colorado, I heard, uh, Thunder Lips up there in Alaska, shout out to him too, 1600. I, you know, I heard them. Meanwhile, the guys in New York and New Jersey, I could hear them in their backscatter talking to the guys in the bayou. So it's all different, you know, things going on simultaneously. And that's how the Super Bowl started also. It was all simultaneous. So we're just trying to get a little picture in everybody's head so everybody can see how it comes together. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to put it together like that. But um, like right now, we talked to uh, 459. We talked to Miss Foxy last week. She's up in the Buckeye. And we talked to Crack Card up there in the Evergreens. This week, we're going to go a little bit with the Northeast Corner. And like I said, we're going to bounce a little bit here and there, different different stations, guys that have been around a long time, guys not so long, you know. But uh, we're trying to give you a little bit of flavor of what's going on and how these guys got in the Raiders. So without further ado, I'm going to bring these two guys from the Northeast Corner. We're going to get into the Northeast Corner today. And uh, you guys, welcome. Let me see. We got a Mr. DX Blanket and Heavy Chevy out of New Jersey. What's going on, fellas? Uh, welcome, What's, up? Up? What's going doing? on? All right, all right. Great to have you guys. Heavy Chevy, you can show your face, man. You, you don't, don't be scared. Yeah, there you go. Long day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the show, my friends. Uh, glad to have you on. And uh, we just want to get a little taste on how things, how you guys got started up in the Northeast Corner and how things are going in the Northeast Corner, man. Uh, welcome aboard. Welcome uh, to the show. Excited to have you guys on and uh, just want to learn a little bit about you guys. And uh, I know you guys represent Dave May Camp and you guys represent him well, by the way. So without further ado, man, uh, let's get into it, man. Uh, Mr. Blanket. Now, yes, how long have you been on the band, my brother? Uh, I've been in the radio since about 1979. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll be 55 this year. I, okay. stopped dying, I stopped dying the beard, so now you can tell my age. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I've been in, into it since I was around 11. Uh, my neighbor in Philly, there was a lot of car clubs, CB clubs and whatnot, and my neighbor was in, the, uh, in a car club. And he got on the CB, he called out to his buddies, Next thing you know, the whole block in Philly filled up with Volkswagens. Wow. And from that point on, I was hooked. Because the only way you talk to people back then were either in person, on the house phone, or on the CB radio. And that was my first experience. And from there, I was hooked. Wow, that's cool. What about you, Chevy? Uh, back in 1975, 76, I got to say, I was like 11, 12 years old. Neighbors had CB radios. I remember they, they had that whip antenna <laughs> yeah, back in the day. And a couple of my neighbors got me into it, talking on the radio. And they, I remember when they showed me the cards. When you talk out of text, they seen no cards. No QSL cards. Right card. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And they wanted to got me into it. And from there to now. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you talk about QSL cards. You. A lot of guys don't really know about the newer guys, but though back in the day, you have QSL cards with your little handle and like a little duck or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. had from the state you had. That, that's pretty awesome, man. So now let me let me ask you guys this: How did you guys get together in terms of getting together with Dave Maiden and, and talk a little bit about about how you guys got affiliated with Dave? Well, my started. I met Dave around 19, 20 years old. Uh, a lot of guys, but. In fact, it started from me here that introduced me to Dave. And from there, we, from there, we've been friends since then to the now. That's and awesome. Man. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Mulehead. I, so, uh, I met Dave probably in 89. Um, that's kind of when the sweet tube situation was going kind of out of phase with the 8950s, the Makos, and stuff yeah. like that, and the Mobiles, and something new came on the scene that was popular, which was Dave with his transistors, because before then, we were running Texas Stars, and TNTs, and stuff like that, and this guy popped up on the scene 
with these amps that everybody was talking about. They looked pretty crude back then. They were like metal bent over the edge of a table or whatever the case may be, but they were smoking and, you know, eventually um, uh, it just caught like wildfire. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, dealing with Fancy Dancer. I can't, I can't tell about the history without keeping it real. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Fancy Dancer kind of went around the key down scene, started making it popular, and then it just started catching on. And Mulehead was the first AC guy for Dave. It just caught on from there. So we've just been friends ever since. Wow, that's pretty. That's that's pretty awesome to hear, man. Uh, and you guys come a long way. I know from from day building the DC boxes all the way now to, you know, AC, huge AC stuff over there in the northeast corner. I know, and there's a lot of competition. I know right now in the northeast corner, you got yeah. you got you guys, Dave. You got Koki. You got muddy water boxes still around. You got Koki. You got you know, man. Even uh, even some of the DC guys. I don't know if you remember Pony from up back in the yeah. day from up the northeast corner too so mm -hmm. it's, it's been a tight game and uh uh just glad that you guys are able to contribute man and uh we sure appreciate you guys man but uh what else uh what else have what's going on and uh, if you want to talk about the brand you know what, what what's going on what's where it come from where it's at and where it's going where do you see it going well, in terms really, of day made stuff i really think that um you know back in the day in the in the late 80s early 90s the Dave May brand kind of cornered the market, so to speak, brought a lot of new things to the game. It started catching on. Uh, people started doing different things. And, you know, more tech started coming out, whatever the case may be. And then it, it kind of, you know, it was more choices out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because people saw something that worked. And, of course, you know, they kind of followed suit or whatever the case may be. And then, Dave kind of pulled back from the mainstream to start his own business. And that kind of made room for the other brands to really get real popular. Um, and then COVID hit years later, recently, yeah. Yeah. And, and the window opened again, and it looked like it could be promising for the brand again. So here recently, we brought uh, a lot of our older big boys back. You know what I mean? We got some some people that are coming in on the business side, on the management side of things. So the Dave May brand, we're about to go hot and heavy uh, again this year. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear, man. Now, back in, you know, when I started, like, in the key down circuit, like, in the late 90s, early 2000s, you guys were really running a lot of uh, – a lot of good stuff in terms of like, remember Camp Lejeune? The guys don't know about Camp Lejeune, one of the yeah. biggest breaks ever, man. Uh, I guess yeah. circa 98 to about 2010, that was a place to be, the place to go, the place to key. Uh, and uh, I remember a couple guys, Muhead was one of, the, one of the baddest gang of bangers on there with the one alternator class, two alternator yeah. class. And so was Concrete Man. Whatever happened yeah. to uh, Concrete Man? Is he still around? Yeah, he's still around. Okay. Still around. He just—I think he's doing something else as far as a hobby goes. I think he's in uh, building race cars and stuff like that. But mentioning Camp Lejeune, that was like the mecca of C. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, 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 if if you never experienced Camp Lejeune, you really never have experienced the camaraderie and love that this hobby really has brought to all of us. And and I kind of got that feeling. To be honest, when we went to uh, Michigan with Low to the Ground and Young T Bird, yeah. and 819, and them guys up there, mm -hmm. they have definitely the foundation to be the next Camp Lejeune. I wow. felt the same love when we went up there as we would feel back in the day when we went to Camp Lejeune. It, it, it's just amazing to see how many people you could bring together from different walks of life. That with so much love, CB being the segue into that, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's amazing. We have something very special in our hobby. Wow, wow. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, how many guys would you say is actually in the Dave Made camp? I mean, do you guys have um, ten guys, fifteen guys? I mean, is it just? Um, is it it used to lot? be. It used it, it to me 
and I don't know how Chevy feels about this, but back in the day when it was all word of mouth, it wasn't any internet, cell phones were just coming out, flip phones and stuff, everything was word of mouth. It seemed like the whole world was Dave me <laughs> to me. People from Delaware, people from New York, people from all over the place. Um, and over the years, you know, like I said, there's been a lot more, more choices and equipment and stuff like that. And with Dave backing out, starting his own business and all, our 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 close knit circle has gotten smaller. We've we've lost a couple people. A couple people passed away. Shout out to rest in peace to Mulehead. But right now, I say, how many you think it is? Man? Well, it, it depends. If you're talking about, there are a lot of people that today got day made equipment. Right. You know, a lot of them don't might don't say it, but a lot of guys out there got day made equipment. So I think it's big. It's still big. But in the immediate circle, just a handful of us, maybe maybe eight or ten in the immediate circle. You know what I mean? But it's a day made world as far as we're concerned, because if you look around and you talk to some of the guys out there, whatever, they'll, they'll tell you that, you know, some of the Dave's philosophies and things that he brought to the game, they're all over the world. People are doing things his way, some of them, and they don't even realize it. Right, right. So, like, it's me. It's a Dave made you know, world to us. Dave made world to you. Hey, so, I mean, I've known I, – since I come into the game, I got into the game about 11, right? And right off rip, I mean, I learned about the name, the brand. I, I, I You know, in my mind, you just – you you gather it coming in as a duck, you know, and you say, hey, okay, Dave made camp. It's a camp. You know, there might be 10 or 20 guys somewhere around there, you know. But I know I've seen Dave made AC boxes. And I know I've seen Dave made DC boxes. And there's also, you correct me if I'm wrong, there's guys that has broken off from Dave and they've went out there and they've started doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another guy, I think, that he he does work for Dave. And I think the logo still stays the same. So what I'm driving at here, what would you, what would you, what would you found Dave? What would you found that that Dave made camp as? Would you would you found them more? to DC or would you found them more towards AC or a mixture of both? Because I know there's both out there. Well, I think Dave initially years ago, the brand really got popular from DC, from the DC apps. It wasn't originally, uh, he didn't target, the brand didn't target DC or competition. I should say that key down. Right. It was just, he started making a product. It cooled on. People liked it over what was out there as far as factory ants. Because what we discovered early on with Billy D. Williams, number two, Disco City, going around doing key downs and everything is that right. factory amps, you couldn't put volts to them. We discovered volts, like putting volts to an amplifier would make it do more power. Mm. But then if you put volts to it, it would burn the boards up. So Dave came out with copper boards and this and this and that. So the DC stuff got really, really popular and then he started making AC. You know what I mean? The DC stuff got popular because more people could afford it. It was more affordable. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But I would say the DC stuff was more popular but the AC stuff became just as popular with the bigger guys. With the mule heads and Moses and a lot of different guys like that. But I think the DC to answer your question kind of really got the got the brand really popular. Right. Right. Would you, would you, you, the, the, you asked another part another part of the question was um, other people with the brand and all that stuff. If you know, you know. <laughs> if if you yeah, <laughs> if nobody hey, really if nobody sanctioned to build Dave made amplifiers, but uh, our boy down in Alabama. I mean, right. That's it. Uh, whoever right. else is using Dave's name or has, if you know, you know, that's all I can it's say just, about that. It's just, it's just out there. I mean, it happens. It's just, you know, I mean, yeah. so, yeah, I totally, I totally feel you on that. I mean, as far as you say, you got a lot of stuff going on. It's about to blow up bigger than ever. 
I mean, I know you don't want to really put it all out there. You can't probably put it all out there, but we can dig in. We can kind of enlighten on a few things for the viewers and give them a sneak peek or something, you know. Uh, just some for the viewers, for us, what just kind of kind of kind of break the water back a little bit. Like what's coming? What can we expect out of the camp? Um, we're gonna go more mainstream and affordable with the wide band audio. Um modulators, radios, like you see back here. That's a full-blown uh, transmitter. transmitter back there. Um, but we're going with something that's more compact, more affordable, but still using the technology to keep the, the signal within the parameters of a channel, avoid bleed over and stuff like that. So we're going to put a, a affordable radio transmitter out there, mobile and base. And we're really going to dig in and try to capture the LD MOSFET market for the mobile and for the base station. Because as we all know, <laughs> the steel tube resource is drying up with the medical field, with the military, the surplus and stuff. Yeah. And 2879s, they work okay, but they're inefficient and they're not affordable anymore. Right. So it's time yeah. for something new. Dave's been doing. LD MOSFETs for 15 years for other frequencies. It's just a matter of switching it over, making it work for our frequency, and it's all good. We already got the stuff developed. It's just a matter of putting it out there, you know, making it affordable. Right. Is Dave so like we won't dig too deep, but this pretty this pretty reasonable question, I think, across the board for the for the for everybody in the in the show. Uh are we gonna? Are you? Are you guys still gonna stay with the switchers, or are you gonna get with the transistors that you can just plug straight into the in, into the? We'll call it plug and play. Or you want to talk about any of that? Or um, well, we'll leave something to be desired. I can just say that. <laughs> I can just say that Dave. Jimmy trying to pull some strings over there. So he he to to be desired. Jimmy he Swagger, he's trying to, he's, he's not trying to fill back the layers. He's trying to go deep down in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? me, hey, so while, we're shoot, while we're sitting here shooting the shit, and ain't nobody listening, you know, it's just us <laughs> four. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, okay, so when you say affordable, I mean, you got me intrigued over here. When you say affordable, we're thinking for the working man. You know, we all know that this stuff is super expensive. You know, we got to put our nickels together. If we want it, we get it. If we And if we can't really afford it, then we just, we budget ourselves and then we go get it anyways if we want it, right? So, right. Uh, when you when you say affordable, I mean, and you're coming out with this modern technology uh, with the transmitter like you showed us behind you or whatever, are you, are you, are, are we, what's going to happen with the Collinses? What's going to happen with the Johnsons? Are we going to, are we going to retire those old irons or what, what are we looking at here? You never, you never going to retire the boat anchors. You never going to retire <laughs> the tram. Listen to that Godfather when he comes out there on this tram. You could, you could never retire the boat anchors and the trams and brownings. You can't retire them, but you can introduce something else. You know what I mean? To include it in what's going on. Because now, let's face it, technology changes overnight. And right. when you hear a Dave May transmitter on the band, I don't know if maybe nobody in here had ever heard one. But yeah, when, you hear, when you hear a Dave May transmitter on the band, normally a person will be like, I want to sound like that. So oh, yeah. versus buying something that costs 15 Seventeen thousand, like behind me, it's going. We're going to put something out that's more affordable, compact. You know what I mean? It's a market for it because there's other folks out there with modulators and radios that sound a certain way or whatever. And it's a market for it. You know well, what let, I mean? let me ask you this: Are you are you guys steering this in a direction that if a part breaks, that the operator can reach out, buy a part? and replace his own part, or where they have to like load that thing back up and carry it back? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it depends, but I mean, you're talking solid state. It's not really a lot to break. You know what I mean? Right. If you follow the instructions when you get it and you run equipment within the parameters. Man, you're you talking about CBS on channel six. Know, Ain't nobody going to run anything on the parameters. Get that, they get that <laughs> stick put on them. <laughs> get five watts in it, and it's just do this. Start breaking it to the right. Get keyed on. 
<laughs> like all <laughs> power, like all power in Georgia says, balls to the walls, baby. Yeah, yeah. You can't help it, man. It's like it's like riding in the car next to somebody, and when they start passing you, your foot automatically goes to the floor. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, no, that's that's some What's good up, shit. That's some that's some real good shit, you know. I mean, you guys. I mean, that's that's hey, that's why we got you guys on the show, you know, to get a little history, to get a little where you guys are right now, what's current in the game, you know. And like I say, I know you can enlighten the, the viewers, you can enlighten us, and on on some stuff, but some stuff we just can't talk about. And you'll let us know, you know. I'm not scared to yeah. ask the questions. You'll well, tell I'll me if that. you can answer them, you know. I mean, you're gonna let me know. So, but for my viewers. Everybody, my viewers know that I, I will ask some questions. So, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. as you're supposed to. You got to ask a difficult question. Man, you know me, man. I'll ask them. Hey, but you know, I got I got just one more right off the top because I get so many people that hit me up. What is the deal with the rod of gods, man, that you guys was doing? What is going on with those antennas? Um, I mean, it's just about supply and demand. There was a time where uh, when the Rod of Gods were really introduced to the game and we were using them or people that came through the camp wanted antenna systems and they would build them for them and they, we would go to key downs with them, they would outlaw us. Like they would out, like they outlawed the chip or anything that we, you know, brought to the scene through Dave and Dave introduced and we would win with it, they, they would outlaw it. <laughs> So they outlawed the rod of God. So, you know, um, production of it just went went down because you, who are you going to sell it to? You know what I mean? A right. guy will buy it and set it up to shoot skip. But the rod of God, it really got famous from a key down that we went to back in the day in Florida. They uh, told with, with, with our boy Rock and Roll. roll uh, Daytona running, Beach. Daytona, uh, yeah. Daytona. And right there by the racetrack, I remember that little, back in 96, 97. Yeah, yeah, with the little pickup truck with three antennas, rod of God, and just took the heads off. You know, that's kind of controversial right now. I, I don't <laughs> know. You might, you might want to get Todd on here. You might want to get Weed on here. He might be able to, after so many years, release the the truth. But you know, that's where it got popular. But kind of production went down the drain a little bit because. The guys couldn't run them in key downs, and people would buy them here and there to run them to skip and whatnot. But I mean, right. they've already developed a newer style. It doesn't use that glass capacitor. He 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 does it a certain way. You know what I mean? And it's and back to the radio thing, real quick. Mm -hmm. Those digital radios, the transmitters, Dave can remote into them and fix them. Oh, so wow. another plus with them, yeah. He can remote now, it's basically a big gaming. It's a it's a big gaming computer. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the big even the smaller one that I had in the mobile recently with a laptop. I went off air for some reason. I called Dave. I was, I was like, I'm off the air. He said, Where at? Where you at? I said, I'm on my way to the shop. He said, Pull over in emergency lane. I pulled over. I hit the hot spot on my phone. He logged in right to my laptop and fixed my transmit. Boom. Wow. <laughs> That's some next now, level. Now, so is that yeah, four, yeah. like 434 talks? So said, I know he's part of the Dave May guys with you guys. He says he's on a cordless mic. Is that what he's talking about? Sure. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yep. Yes, Steve, uh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. Cordless yeah. So, mic, cordless mic. so you guys got this transfer. You're coming out with the transmitters and you say that the, you, you know, you're going to put a market for the FETs and this and that. Are you guys, are you guys like for the average working man out there, are you guys going to put a kit together to where a man can come in, spend one chunk of money and get like a radio, a transmitter, and then a FET box? Are you going to, are you going to set a combo up like that? Are these things going to be compatible with all the FET boxes or there's going to have to be mods or, or what, what's up with that? Um, there, there, you know, a oh, mod. So we got a little. Uh, there you go. I lost you for a second. Um, LD MOSFETs, as you guys probably know, they're more efficient. So, you know, you got to you, you, you gotta do a little modification as far as running a regular radio with them or whatever. Um, they don't require a lot of drive. They don't require a lot of current to run them. So it's going to be kind of it, it's going to have to be something like that, kind of like a combo or whatever. Um, and and Dave has ways of of calming down, so to speak, 
a normal radio. So say if you buy an LD MOSFET amp and you want to run it with your regular radio that you already have, then he'll have something where it can adapt to a regular, you know, CB radio right. so you can run yeah. it. At well, that's good. That's time. good. That's good. That's real good. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Now, and looking at that transmitter back there, you know, whenever I hear somebody with good audio, I know it's either Dave May guys, you know, I'll name them all right off the bat, Triple Three, uh, number two, Disco City, uh, with, with, with that quality audio, Sidewinder, Dave, and, you know, it, it's in comparison, like Motormouth Mall, D-Rail's putting out some good products, too. So mm-hmm. whenever I hit, think about good audio, when I hit good audio, you guys always pop up on the top of my head, man. Sure, so, sure, so, sure. So props to you guys. And I remember a heavy Chevy when he in the mobile and uh uh man he's over there hiding in the corner though. But I want to give you your props too, man. Uh been around a while and I oh, appreciate yeah. you joining us. And uh man, I'm gonna see if I get some more some questions. If you got anything else, Steve, I'm gonna ask the guys uh that are tuning in if they have any questions. Uh, I'm gonna try to get to a couple questions. So if anybody has any questions, just type them in. Don't forget to like and share and see what we got for the guys, the Dave May Camp. We got a uh, uh, DX Blanket and Heavy Chevy out of New Jersey and Philly, respectively. So give, give us a, a shout and uh, see what we could ask them. And uh, anything else, uh, uh, Jimmy? Man, I got I got tons, man. I'm just sitting here and I'm just we, we can sit here. We can, we can sit here all night. I know. Stay out my pocket, Jimmy. Stay out my pocket, Jimmy. Yeah, these, these guys, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't we yeah, we didn't bring we didn't bring these guys on here to interrogate them. We brought them on here for knowledge, man. No, you know, yeah. to, to just I wanted to pump their minds a little bit and see where they're at in the game. But, you know, both of you guys, this question's for both of y'all. I mean, like, from where y'all have been and, and where you are current, I mean, where do, you, where, do you see, where do you see the game? Where do you see the game going with all the animosity that's out there with the competition, you know, up there? A lot of competition, a lot of animosity up there in that northeast corner. I mean, we can – we can we we can talk about a ton of shit. I mean, but I, that, that that we ain't gonna get into that bullshit tonight. But I mean, where do you guys see it all going? Where do you see it coming, and where do you see it going? Um, like you say, it's the Super Bowl. That's what I say. The game, it, it, it's just CB. It wasn't for CB. We know you know each other. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's just, to me, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's just competition out there. You know, it's all about Mother Nature. You know about the Watts. It's Mother Nature. It's all is good. I think. I think, in my in my opinion, it's promising. I think that it's up to the guys that've been in the game for a long time to lead by example. You know what I mean? I think we have to maybe change the terminology from saying fighting to maybe saying sparring or mm. match or whatever, because some yeah. of the younger guys. They they don't they're very competitive and they might not be as seasoned as some of us to be able to engage in friendly competition like a basketball game a game of pool right, or whatever right. even when you're a young kid you're taught sportsmanship when you finish the game win or lose you you go by each other you say, good game good game good game and you go cry in the locker room or cry in the car with your mom you know what I mean so we have to lead by example. And, you know, just show the guys that it's not really a fight, per se. It's not personal. It's just friendly competition. That's what the Super Bowl is about. You want to, if if, if you don't want all the the back and forth and the the skull dragging, whatever, the the ragging on each other, go to a channel where they don't do that. They just, that's what happens on the Super Bowl is where the big boys are. So, you can't come, can't come to the Super Bowl with thin skin. Right. When you when you when you guys were eleven and twelve, when you guys were eleven and twelve years old and you're talking back in in in, in uh what'd you say 60, 69, 70, 71, 79. 79. When you when you come in there around 79 through 80, 85, I mean, what 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 was going on the bowl back then? That's not uh, what was going on. Question. Is what you seen back then? What you let me get my question right. What you seen back then? Do you guys see it now, or is it, or is it different, or is it way different with the with the younger guys now? Well, you got to go back because back in 75, 76, 77, a lot of people had that many watts back in the day. 
There you go. That's most most of watts I know. If people had maybe a hundred watts or two hundred watts back in those days, if somebody had a thousand watts, you were a big man mm -hmm. back in those days. <laughs> Say that one more time, Chevy. I said back in the day, 75, 76, you had most watts you were doing maybe 100, 200 watts. Now, in these days, you're doing 10,000, 20,000 watts. So that's a big difference. And I'm going back when I was that young then. As far as there was, power, there was one point, yeah. there was one point I wanted, I wanted him to hear, I wanted him to repeat it where he said, a thousand watts. He was, a big, a, big he was a big man. He was a big man. That's true. That's what back in those days, back, back yeah. in the day, back in the day, if if you had a Browning, a Tram, a Moon Raker Four, and a triple stage Phantom, or a Golden Falcon, or a Golden okay. Eagle Five Hundred, oh. you was the man. You was the man. Then the boys, then the boys, Cali always been ahead of us. So when the boy, the Glen boys and 766 and all them guys, we was running Phantoms and Golden Falcons and, and all that crap. They were already running 3,000s and 6,000s and stuff wow. out there. So, you know, we were kind of behind the time. But it was it was times back in the day, you turn your CV on despite the power. Skip would be rolling all day, every day to the point where you couldn't even talk local. That's right. That's so right. it's kind of it's kind of getting back to that when the skip cycles in there. It's just you can predict what's going to happen over here. We hear uh, the islands. We hear we hear our boy down there in the islands that run the islands. Well, <laughs> <looking at people>. <laughs> <laughs> we hear our boy down there all day, all morning until about maybe nine thirty, and then then he falls off, and you start hearing Texas and stuff like that, but. In the morning, back in the day, uh, up in this area, the guys would do a lot of ground wave. You know yeah. what I mean? And then after that, the skip would come in, and it'd just be skip all day, every day on, on every channel. I mean, 20, 30 DBs all day. All day. Do you, hey, do you feel day. like – go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I want to get to the questions real quick, and then – if it's all right with you guys, I mean, I, I, I got my thumb on the thing with the question. I, I, I was just gonna, talking about, I was going to ask you ask him one more question. The only question I wanted to shout out and shoot over to him, uh, blanket is, uh, do, do you feel like that a lot of guys out there on the band are paying way too much uh, attention and too much focus and time into these water gates of, I mean, because like I'm sure yourself. When when you when you're talking on the radio, you know what you're doing on the radio. Do you really do you really need to put that much attention and focus into Watergates to hear yourself again or to rebuttal it? What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I think in my opinion, I think Watergating it's changed because years ago we would Watergate with a cassette player and a cassette tape and you know, maybe throw the, throw the tapes on the side somewhere and years later or maybe weeks later to, to make a point about something, we would get together in the park and be like, oh, I got the Watergate of what happened. You know what I mean? So the Watergates are, it's, it's, it's good from a historical perspective. It's good to, to, to have that stuff years later to remember people by, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's a good thing, you know what I mean? It's it's history. It's like it's like an old film or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? I, I think it's a good thing. I, I like it myself. Um for that for that reason. You know what I mean? For just historical purposes. You know what I mean? I I got a a, a shoe box of uh tapes right now from because we used to go in the park, coffee shop in Delaware, Pony would come, Billy D would be there. Muddy Waters, Dave, and we would go down there and shoot out Friday night. We stay out there till four thirty in the morning. You hear the birds chirping, and, sure, sure. and we'd be Watergate. And some of those tapes are still around, and but the people, <laughs> some of the people aren't. So yeah, from I a heard. historical perspective, yes, yeah, it's, it's good. People can overdo overdo it with anything. Sure, you know what I mean. But I think from a historical perspective, just something to say. To hear those voices, I listened to a Watergate the other day. Golden Arm was on. Mm, it wow. was the day before he got electrocuted. Oh. 
You know, it was like Christmas Eve or something, like back in, I don't know when it was, 93 or something, whenever it was. Well, I, was in, I think 98. It was back in 98. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, you know. Rest in that peace, Golden cool. Arms. Yeah. Rest in peace. One of the biggest hammers in Florida. Real quick, yep. before I get loose track, you were talking about a thousand watts. You were the man. Uh, uh, Machete over there on the West Coast, one of his sayings, like, everybody has a big box. Everybody got a big box. So, with that being said, he asked a question is, uh, what? How much power are we looking for in the in the MOSFET boxes? If you give us a little glimpse, you know, like one transistor equals what? Or how are you going to do them with the volts? And if you could just kind of like elaborate a little bit on the MOSFETs. Um, it depends on which devices you you use. You know what I mean? It's twelve hundred watts for a single device, eighteen hundred watts. It just depends on which devices you use. Um, they do they do different different power, you know what I mean? So different applications. The main, thing, the main thing about MOSFET technology is that MOSFETs are easier to run and they're more efficient, you know what I mean? A 2879 is like, for the for the current and the drive and all, they might be 45, 50, if that much efficient, where a, a MOSFET is in the 90 percentile efficient, which means you don't have to run as much current you know, as much juice to power it up and you don't have to run as much drop. Hmm. You know what I mean? I just had one in line in my mobile with an up converter power supply that converted regular voltage to 50 volts. And I was driving it with one watt peaking 12 and, and it was almost doing full power. Wow. Yeah. So it's efficiency. Another guy named Jojo Gessner. I don't know who that is. If Hey guys, put your CB handle uh, when you ask this question. But he said, when is the Javelin coming to the market? Um, I believe about midsummer, uh, but that design has been revamped a little bit. What is so what is that look, for the for the viewers? Look a little different. It's basically that antenna that looks like an ice cream cone. Okay. You know, it's that ground plane takes yeah. a lot of power. Um, they've changed the design of it a little bit, so it's going to look a little different, but perform the same way. Awesome, and awesome. Real, real quick, real quick, uh, 413. Yes, sir. Uh, for the viewers, for the viewers as an ear uh, sake on this, are you are you guys going to market like a two transistor, a four transistor? Are you, are you, are you, are you, you know, are you just going to build what people want, kind of be all over the place with it? Or do you, are, are you guys coming out with a two and a four and a six or an eight? Or what, what's up with that for the viewers? Um, I believe – the plan is just to come out with something small and then just build it up from there. It'll probably be in pairs. Right. Like a two so, pill or something you'd say? Yeah, like two two devices, four devices, six devices, like that. Two because then you have to build yeah, you gotta you, you have to build combiners and it's 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 other things that go along with this. So you, so it's fair to say you're gonna start to market off of like a two transistor setup. Yeah, probably probably one device and then two and then fill the market out and then go up from there up to probably something that will do 20, 30,000. You know what I mean? Right. It depends on the buyer. Well, yeah, that question, I just – Depends I, on I, what they want to spend, yeah. I just, say, I just saved you a bunch, I just saved a lot of people a lot of phone time right there by that question. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> hey, real quick, also, this is going to be the last question I'm going to take. I, I see uh, – uh, Big John Stud, it's going to kind of be a little edgy question. Uh, he keeps asking it, so I'm just going to go ahead and ask you. You can answer if you want, if you don't have to. But uh, is there any animosity between the Dave May guys in New Jersey in comparison with the guys in Alabama? That's a question that's been asked like three or four different times by Big John Stud. Is there any type of animosity? Is there any hatred or anything towards uh, Dave down there in Alabama? I don't know what it's about. I'm just asking this four, four. No, four, no, no, no. Hatred. Uh, no. That's a strong we're, word. We're, we're partners. Okay. We're, we're a collaboration, and we're actually going to bring some other like-minded people into this thing because we're back in the game. So we're back okay. in the game. We, we're partnering up with whoever wants to bring something exciting to the market and be part of it. That's fair right. enough. I'm just asking a question, brother. You threw it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. That's no, a great answer. You know, uh, it. but it's all good, man. Hey, Chevy, what you doing back there, man? 
Like, you, you really he, daydreaming. He, he's hey, he been, work, he been oh, working yeah. all day. He's, he's probably still <laughs> feeling a little wet. <laughs> he's back there daydreaming. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, man, anything else, Jimmy, man? I appreciate these guys coming on. You got anything else to add? Well, so, like, Everybody, everybody does this for egos, right? We're we're all we're all ego driven. We're all ego based. You know, you got a lot of guys, big hammer guys, big strappers. They say, oh, I ain't got no ego." Well, you know, they got egos because you know when they get their ass whooped on twenty six or twenty seven oh two five, they disappear. You know, they can't they can't put that hammer down. They can't do what they want to do. Them some bitches come up missing in action. You know, you don't see them for two three days, two three weeks. You know. They bounce back off in their little spot, you know, and get back around the radio or whatever and be like, damn, bro, where you been? Oh, you know, the sweet thing had me tied up, dog. The job <laughs> had me working overtime and all this bullshit, right? But the real fact of life is he done got his ass yoked off out there on the van. Can't get that, can't get that paper stacked right, you know what I mean? Can't get around that technician. Can't, yeah, they do. Can't get around that technician, get them wires reworked, you know what I mean, and get back on the radio. So, yeah. you know. I mean, where, where do you guys, where do you guys, if you, if you had to say, like, if you left here tomorrow, if you left here tomorrow, because nobody's promised, if you, if you, if you had to say, what would you want to be remembered as? Chevy, this is you too, homie. This is you too, Chevy. What would you yeah, guys, yeah. In, your own, in, in your own words, in your own words, you know, for us, the viewers, the, the world, whatever, in your own words, what do you guys want to be remembered as? Well, first enough, one of the CV friends. I've been around the CV a long time. I've been in the game. I've been on a lot of key downs, won a lot of key downs in my time. Like I said, it wasn't for the CV. We didn't even know each other. So I love mm -hmm. the sport. This is my hobby. Come on. Real talk. Real talk. What about you, Blanket? I'd, I'd, I'd want to be remembered as just a friendly guy that just like to have fun and enjoy people and enjoy the hobby. You know what I mean? That's my that's my thing. When I go around, I I love people. I like I I want to listen to the big guy's story about who he keyed on, and I want to listen to the guy's story that comes up to me and tell me he talked around the world with a barefoot radio. <laughs> everybody's story is is relevant you know what i mean you think of an old man at the end of his life and you see him laying in the bed about to take his last breath and you can't see him for that he's got a history he's got a story Absolutely. He's got something to tell so everybody's relevant and i just i just like to be remembered as a guy that loved people loved the hobby man and just you know did what i could to bring people together Proof, proof, I couldn't answer to no better. Yeah, man. You got a uh, bad attitude shouting it out, saying what's up. What's up, bad attitude. What's up, what's yeah. up Carolina Super Transmitters? Super transmitters in, there. There. in the house too. We go. We go. Eventually, get to every yeah. kind of crew like this because I like. I like you know. I like having groups of people like the Dave May Camp. I like to get some Ghost Rider guys, you know, so on and so forth to see their experiences and see how they evolve from the past and now into the future. And you got Dave May, you know, always been. Kind of, in my opinion, what's a step ahead of the game, you know, in yeah, terms of builders. They, they've been 10 8 since I can remember. I've been around a while. I still got an M80 somewhere in the garage. So, <laughs> and it still work from 30 years ago. It was still, it's still, still, still working. Up and do yeah. full power. Hey, listen, real That's quick. I got, I got one of the big men just, just walked in the house. One of the original CEOs, OGs from the Dave May camp. Okay. He just got back in the game maybe a couple years ago. Come on over here, number oh, two. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Y'all put a three stool together real quick. <laughs> the real, this is the real number two from Disco City, aka Train Big Train. What's going on, right. Dave? What's going Big on, train. my brother? How you doing, man? Good. Nice to see you guys. You too. You too, man. Boy, you got that station smoking, man. Yeah, we're working hard at it. I mean, uh, we're back for the people. So, yes, sir. We just want the word to be out. Me and Dave are uh, taking it serious. And uh, we're in the game for real. So hopefully uh, everybody else will see us in Augusta in a few months. Awesome, man. Oh, you guys going to get back down? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold oh, we're coming. You don't let we're the cat coming. out the bag. You don't let the cat out the bag. I haven't seen a, a true Dave made. Uh, is it going to be AC now? We're coming to fight, Daytona. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking forward to seeing you guys, man, for sure, bro. Good to see well, you, I man. 
what, what class? Well, since you, hey, since you don't peep that, since you don't peep that out, go ahead and tell us uh, what class is y'all boys going to run in. <laughs> yeah, he can't let it out. He just he well, went. I'm not. He don't want me to give up too <laughs> much information, so I'll keep it on the lowdown. But we're figuring zero to sky. Really? So we're coming back to yeah. fight at, at four thirteen. I might have to tip out on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 we're gonna let it rest, because You know what? That that. Uh, Hey, we might have to rebuttal and come back with another because we got another. We got a show coming up that we're going to dig into some of that stuff too. So we might have you guys back on, man. That's what's up. Be a pleasure. Um, hit us up on DaveMadeAmps.com on Facebook. DaveMadeAmps.com. That's also our our website. We're working to change some stuff up, put some more pictures, put things in, in you know out there so you guys can order them. Uh, we took some big orders today for some of the guys out there. Um, so we're back in the game, man. We're going to ramp hey, real, this thing real, up. Real quick, before, before you guys jump, before you guys jump for the viewers and for my. we can keep you all night. You see Jimmy, get, I'm getting Jimmy going. Jimmy's going. Look, look. He's like, real quick. I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, I just, I got to ask, I got to ask this. It's fresh on my mind. I want, I want, I want the people who, who's young and they don't know because I don't know. And it's, it's, an, it's inquisitive. I'm inquisitive about it. I'm intrigued about it, really. Do you guys work like a nine to five or do you guys just, you guys, are you guys that busy? Do you like show up at well, a shop and work on this stuff all day, five days a week? Yeah. So uh, right now we're running three different shops. Like Blanket said, for many years, we just kind of pulled back uh, our business uh, and Dave's engineering goes into other fields involved in design for medical field. A lot of this equipment is used for other things, uh, basically the same stuff, but it really originates in other places. So that's where he's been specializing. Me and Dave have, uh, uh, we've been good friends since we were kids, 16, 17 years old. We're some married to Dave's sister for 40 some years. So we're family. So we both made a decision here in the last year or so that uh, we're going to do it one more time. So we have three shops running. We have Birmingham. Chris down there is an amazing guy doing work for us. We got two shops in New Jersey running. So we got a crew of people. They're in there 630 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon building. And right now we're stacking inventory. So wow. Blank is going to be announcing soon on Facebook that uh, the door is open. Here we go. And we're going to we, – I told wow. Blank we're going to open the time machine. We're going back to 1980, and Ooh. we're starting this thing over. So – we're coming at it. We're going to give it our best here. We're old men now in our 60s, but we're going to try one more time to give the customers what they want and put the name of the brand back on top of the game again. Well, I'll, well I'll, I'll t- I, that's awesome news, but I'll tell you real quick, and I'll let, I'll let 413 wrap it and cap it. Uh, I, man, I'm telling you, I've been in the hobby. Well, I've been in the hobby forever since I was a youngin, but I tell you, I've been in, I've been on the bowl since 2011, early part of 2012. And man, I've, I've, I've probably owned, most of everybody's boxes. I think I had, I even owned a three tube 500 Z, I think Dave made box or something. And I'm going to tell you, I have never heard anybody dog you guys. So keep up the good work. Good job. I'm super happy. You guys was able to, to get around the round table and come up in here and shoot the shit with us and, and be a part of this and help us grow. So congratulations yep. to all of us. You guys are doing a great job and we yep. appreciate you. Appreciate yeah, it. Really real quick, real quick. Job, when, uh, back in the day in the camp, we were talking about Camp Lejeune. I'm going to go way back. And uh, uh, I got a hold of uh, Concrete Man one day, and he opened the box, and he showed me the numbers he did with one 3,000. Back in the day, I was like, man, that's double the output of what I'm doing, man. So you guys were way ahead back then. My props to you in that, hey, show's always open. Whenever you guys want to promote anything, man, we appreciate you coming coming on the show and give us a little sure, glimpse sure. of the history of the Dave May Camp. And uh, good things coming. Whatever you got to uh, promote something, don't hesitate. Give us a holler. We'll pull it out there. Yep. And, again, uh, just in closing, uh, Daytona, we always give our success and our allegiance to some of the great guys that led us, like uh, Prime Minister, 766, Yellow Jacket. Yep. When we were kids, they told us call anytime, helped us out, and uh, they are a part of why we're here today. Awesome, man. It's all about Thanks, fellas. Thanks, thanks. That's number two, Disco City. We got Mr. DX Blank and Heavy Chevy. I think he's taking a nap because he had a long day. But we thanks for coming. Oh, there he is. Heavy Chevy. There. Hey, thank, thank you, guys. For having us, fellas. Yeah, have a good one, man. Another another one in the books, man. We said, hey, guys, don't go nowhere. We still got another another great guest. Uh, 
what what you think, man? That's some good stuff right there, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just I enjoy talking to guys like that because man, they just they bring so much, you know, and, and they're limited to what they're gonna talk about. And I would be too, but you know, I mean, for the viewers, for for the inquiring mind, for people, you know, coming into this and really not wanting to go AC, these guys heard they heard a lot of good shit tonight. I mean, uh, there were there I know we got a lot of people in the room that that's not wanting to go AC. They're wanting to go FETs and they're wondering when the FET box is coming. Who's coming with the FET box? Even myself, you know, what's happening in the FET world. So I mean there you go. I mean, did we get a solid this or a solid no, no, but we 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 have something that we can gear towards, you know, and we get them guys back on there. We help them guys promote what they want to promote and you know, we learn together, but them them guys are awesome guys, man. I, you know, like I told them, I said, man, I've never heard anything bad about the Dave Made camp. It's just through this, through this show, through this podcast, you know, I finally get to to put a to put a, a name to the face with some of those guys. Absolutely, and you know, you know, it's it's one reoccur reoccurring theme that I'm seeing now is the cost effectiveness now, man. Now the twos are becoming obsolete. The twenty thousands are becoming. Seven, eight thousand dollars per tube, the fifteen thousand, yeah. five thousand. So now I think there's another different way, which you know, DX Blanket and them touched touched upon uh, in terms of MOSFETs and stuff. I think that's where we're eventually going to gear up to. Uh, and, and the transmitter, I mean, they got a beautiful sound, man. When I hear Sidewinder and number two coming out and triple three, they they you know. Whether you like the people or not, the stations are 10 8. You know, they're, they're 10 8, bro. They're competitive. They, them Absolutely. guys are running. And, and they bring they bring big energy when they bring to the band. So, I mean, and like you said, the way the tubes and stuff is going, the way the power supplies and the builders of the power supplies, you know, we got put on point, put on game about, you know, another drop, another, another plug down in Texas, you know, but it's still getting to the point that this this shit is just it, it's coming down to it's not affordable no more no it's, it's it's just not there 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 needs to be a new light you know so these guys might be that light they might be bringing that to the table for for a lot of us so we just got to sit back and see it's kind of like Absolutely. wrestling man yeah yeah <laughs> the wrestling like, right i remember wrestling you know i was a big wrestling kid fan right that's just right like you don't hey, know who the hell is going to take it we're going to take a quick 2 minute break man cuz i know i drank yeah. like two cups of these yetis bro Two of these suckers. I know you guys, hey, you guys could load up on the popcorn. We'll be back. In, hey, Bobby, hey, Blackjack, you you back there, Mr. Blackjack? All right. We're going to go on a break. We'll get with you guys in one minute, two minutes.
And we're back. We are we're back. back. We're back. We live. We live. We live again, man. I had that, a, that was the first time we ever took a commercial. So make sure we got our audio back up in here on the show. We good. We good. We good, man. I don't, I don't like getting commercials, but I, that 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 I drank two of these big old Yetis, and man, nature came calling, man. But what you think, man? What you think about that last segment? I think it was awesome. I mean, you know, I mean, put a good put a good layout out there, format, everything. It was solid. I, I was I was blown away by it, to tell you the truth. You know, I mean, I got the phone over there. I went and checked the phone. I probably got, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 damn calls probably I missed. <laughs> Crazy. But it was it was awesome. There were some really, really good 10-8 guys, man, and they brought a lot to the to the table up here tonight on the show. But well, we're gonna move on. We're gonna keep the energy coming, the big energy. So uh the next guest, you know, we got Godfather in the ATL. He's going to be joining us here. And uh, there he is right there. So <laughs> all the viewers, and we can welcome you in. Hello, Godfather in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -oh. Do we have audio on him? I'm trying to pull him up as audio. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. We're going to have to bring him back in. Well, we just have to, we just have to work right through this. Huh. Well, we had a couple little technical difficulties with him a while ago, and and I thought we had got it all kind of resolved. But either way, the show is going to go on. We going if we can't get him in here and we can't keep him in here on video, then what we'll do is we'll get him up in here on the phone somehow, some kind of way, and we'll get him on. I think he has to plug in his mic. That's what it's saying because I'm trying to give his audio up, and it says um, he has to plug his mic in. But hey. There sure is some good eye candy right there in the background, so we can at least stare at that, uh, at that until he gets it straight. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I tell you, I tell you one thing, Godfather. When when you know I reached out to Godfather and Godfather was willing to come on the show, I I totally felt like you know where we were and what we had discussed and what we had talked about. I figured he was the one solid that could bring us in and drive us home on concluding the uh, the origination of, you know, uh, the Rooster Channel jumpers and, and you know, how the bowl affiliated and, and, and how it started and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, if we can get him on, we can uh, – we Yeah, can, I uh, think if you could get a hold of the Godfather, tell him he has to un – un uh, he has to plug in his microphone. That's the issue. He doesn't have a microphone. So that's what the issue is. So we could get some audio on them. But uh, in the meantime, between time, man, we could uh, shoot. We could get some questions from the viewers until he gets it straight, man. Hey, hey, let, me, let me get on the side real quick. Let me get on the side and see if I can't straighten this out real quick. Take yeah. some questions and I'm going to try to figure this out that way. Because yeah, I definitely want to get him on and I definitely want to get all of his knowledge and lay it out here. Okay. I'm going I'm to go through some of the he, – he got out, so – He's got, Jimmy's going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'm going to entertain some of you guys' questions. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the to, to some of the questions over here. Donald Fulton said amplifier is illegal. This is a four-watt show. All we do over here is four watts, just uh, just for the record. Uh, my holiday tone and Jimmy, nice show. That's from uh, Big Shot over there in, uh, uh, in the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, just I'm going to put this up, too, because they're going to have a, a break coming real soon. And just to give you all a little bit of information on that so you guys can write it down right there. Big Island, Hawaii, meet and greet, March 18, 2023. I cannot say that word. And, and forgive me for the guys in the Hawaiian Islands, uh, Yupa Ho Ho Beach Park. I hope I'm saying it right. But that's uh, Big Island, Hawaii, meet and greet, March 28. Uh, let me see. We got BA in the house, RF Burns, 27 Bushwalker out of Indiana. We got uh let me see who we got. Uh oh a uh, Jojo, a, a blanket. If you're still out there listening, Jojo said to bring back the Dave Made theme song to the website. Uh shout out to DX Blanket from Tony Montana. I see real black man out of Connecticut in the house. Muscle Man is a shout out to Muscle Man. Uh appreciate the love, Jojo. He said the show rocks. We got Brown Hornet. Uh, doggone, we got a lot of people in here, man, uh, tuning in. We, uh, Jimmy's in the background trying to get uh, Mr. Godfather ATL's audio right so we could do this uh, interview with him and get back to the uh, – back. Uh, there you go. Let me see. Let me unmute him. Any good news, Jimmy? Well, we're going to try to bring him back in, bring him back in one more time, and if it works, then we'll run with it. 
And if it don't, we're going to go to phase two. That's Jimmy's phase two. Uh oh, that's we go, we go pull, we go pull a cat out the bag on this. <laughs> you like bus driver. So, what is the it? Show, the Death show Con will five. go on. I promise yeah, you. You're going to be like bus driving, Jordan. We got to go to DEF CON 5 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, New Year, yeah, the bus driver. Drink the wine, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we got 125 in the house. Uh, let me see. I'm just shouting everybody. 123, uh, Chicago. Uh, who we got out here? We got uh, IT. We got Mr. Ellis down there in the Bahama Islands. What's going on, my brother? Controller. Uh, love the app, Controller, by the way. Appreciate it, man. Uh, BA, I saw BA in there. Uh, we got a uh, 5-4 out of Alaska. Shout out to the guys in Alaska, him, Thunderlips. Um, oh, no, I'm just I'm just trying to go down the line, and I don't want anybody to feel left out. We got Showtime Hawaii. We got Big John Studd in the Carolinas. Uh, who we got? Who we got? We got uh, – uh, I'm sure I got the cats. It's always not – well, yeah, a, uh, um, it's always on Fridays. Now, we changed from Saturday, 8 p.m., to Fridays now, it's just a little bit, a little bit easier logistically, and try to get everybody in there. Because Saturdays, you know, a lot of people want to spend time with their, with their families and stuff. So that's where we switched up. Uh, who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Nine seven three. Sometimes called Barry White in Connecticut. Shout out to you. We got What's Busy on, B. Barry? Busy B's out there. What's going on? Ghetto. Weed watching. I know Weed's watching. Somebody shouted Weed out. Weed. Shout out to Weed, Mr. Swamp Weed, the legend of Florida. We got sixteen hundred. Thunder Lips, man, let me see. Put your handles in there so I can shout you out real quick, man. Show some love. Frank Lucas, there you go, Frank Lucas. I was Ellis down there in the Bahama Islands, 10-8, brother, too. Frank, um, Frank Lucas, man, that guy, that Frank Lucas in the Bahamas, man, that guy's <laughs> a celebrity. That guy's a, that guy's a celebrity, man. All the, all, hey, every, hey, that dude, man, when the, he, he does nothing but lay out the red carpet for these guys, man. I've and that's him. how it should be. Man, he got a wall with people signing his signature over there. The other day, me and him were tussling going up to the Great Lakes. He pulled out some brass knuckles on me and stuff. I was like, oh, oh hold up. Back it up, I man. Was, <laughs> I was going to call him. I was going to be like, yo, Frank, let me get some talk time, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, Frank, bad, man. Frank, no, Frank, no, I'm going to tell you something. I'll keep it 100. Frank's got the right attitude, man. Frank, yes, Frank's sir. got the right mentality. He's got the right attitude, I think, you know, because he shows hospitality. He puts out a carpet. You know, he don't he don't let none of them guys come down from the northeast, none down from the states, you know, without, you know, putting a hand in and in, in meet and meet and greet deal. So shout out to big ups, big ups, my brother. Yes, sir. Uh, I like what I like what you're doing. That's why I'm putting you out there. So keep yes, up the, keep up the good work. A couple more shout outs before we get into Godfather coming back. I think he's getting him backstage right now. Uh we got cool chains out of Hawaiian Island. Shout out to Cool Chains, Fred and Mo Fred in Connecticut, Nine Hawk in Virginia. Young Snoop Dogg in the house too, man. Shout out to Snoop Dogg Snoop. and everybody doing big things. Zigzag Man in Oklahoma, Devil Dog, Black Ice in Connecticut, old school. That's What's that's up, a ice? major plug. Of, yeah, man. Shout out to Hambone and more Hambone. Uh, who we got? We got eighty three in the Mini Grass. Barry White. I said Barry White. Two seventeen oh, Western okay. Illinois. Shout out to you guys up there in the in the Midwest Illinois. Number one in Maryland. Number twenty on um, Channel Twenty Eight. Sandbagging on the bowl. Pork chop. Good evening. By you waving. D Rail's in the house. What's up, D Rail? Shout out to D Rail and D Win, his brother. 10 8 count, boy. Uh, Rocket Box, 33 in the lakes. Keep them coming, man. I'll shut you out. We're trying to trying to get off. I think we got, we're going to give it another shot, man. Hopefully, we can get this legend, this pioneer. Again, we're going to give it another shot, see what's going on. How about it, Mr. Godfather Break? Hello, Godfather in Atlanta, Georgia. Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm trying to come back to you, man. I don't know whether you hear me or not. Uh, hold on I can hear you right there. I'm trying to get back in the studio. We, we got you. We you got you. Don't touch the thing, man. Don't touch the thing, Godfather. Don't touch the thing. Don't touch nothing over there, Don't touch anything. Don't touch nothing over there. You are talking. Smoking. That's that boy. That's the golden voice right there. Hey, 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 Godfather. I'm close. I chose yeah. the wrong hobby because I do not have a radio voice. When I hear your voice, I, I tell myself, man, I went into the wrong damn hobby. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Man, I'm telling you, man, I really enjoyed it, man. Uh, I've got to say, uh, DX Blanket and Heavy Chevy, man, I really enjoyed that information. 
Yeah, I enjoyed all of that. The first half, man, it was really good, man. You guys doing a great job, man. I, 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 my hats off to you, the full time. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, you know, we're bringing big energy, GF, and and you know, I just getting you on the show. You know, when you picked the call up, I mean, it was it it was it was great, man. Because I figured with the knowledge and the years that you got behind this and behind you that you know we could bring this to a, a a closure more or less is is where i was driving with it you know and uh like i told all the viewers and in 413 you know we're, when we when we put this together and started this we we wanted we took off on a platform in a format that we wanted to know we wasn't there you know what i mean we yeah. wasn't there and and it's hard for people that's not there to tell a story so the only way to tell the story is to let you know people of, of of that time come back and tell the story and if you do it any other way than that right there then you're 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 already uh, you're putting the hoof behind the the rear so you know you're yeah. just going to win that away but you know i mean to start it off we're just sitting around we're kicking in on the stools tables whatever you know and just tell us a little bit about it who who is godfather who is the man behind the mic that everybody hears on the mic okay well well, let me start this way. I started out in radio in uh, 1971. And uh, I went to work one day, and a friend of mine was standing on the dock with a, a Midland walkie talkie. And he called a guy, he called somebody, and they came back to him. I said, Man, I like that. So let me talk on it. But he, what he would do, he wouldn't let me hold a walkie talkie. He would mash the button and put it to my mouth and let me talk. And I didn't like that. So the next day, I had a walkie talkie. My own walkie talker, Midland. So that's when I started in radio, man. I started talking on that thing, man, and I met a lot of the guys from Atlanta, and uh, it just went on from there, man. And 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 the, the most important thing that I I love about CB radio is when you when you when you put a face with the voice that you hear all the time, then you then you you know this is this a connection there. And we I did that man for a while, man, and and I enjoyed it. And my first, we used to call them, we call them breaks now. You go into the break, you go into the break. Well, back in the day, we called them coffee breaks. <laughs> That's what we used to call them, coffee breaks. And the first coffee break I went to was in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, big man of Memphis, Tennessee was barbecue man. He was a bad dude, man. And uh, we went up there, man, and we had a nice time in Memphis. And he had a big party at his house. And I went to his house and. He said, uh, I'm calling myself Rocket Jock, man. That, that was my handle, Rocket Jock, because I work in Rocket a radio Jack. station. Yeah, I work in a radio station part time. And, and I said, I, since I was a jock, I called myself Rocket Jock on the uh, CB radio. That's where the voice came from. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, got on the barbecue man's, and I was amazed when I walked in this radio room. I had never seen a Drake watt meter do over 200 watts in my life. His Drake watt meter did 1,400 watts. <laughs> I was scared to death when I looked at that thing. I said, man, what is this? He said, that's a heat kit. Where did you get that at? He said, when that Atlanta got that, I said, I got, I'm ready to go home. He said, ain't nobody leaving tonight. I said, man, I got to get me one of those things to do them kind of watts. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. So I got back to Atlanta, man, and went on Roswell Road, the heat kit. And I saw him in the wall tent. I told the guy, I want this right here. He said, okay, but I have to order it for you. I said, how much? And he said, 379. I said, okay. All right. Called two weeks later, the guy called me back. He said, your amplifier's ready. Oh, man, I couldn't wait. I ran red lights. Get up there, get that tube. <laughs> Got back home. It was in two boxes. One box just had the tubes and another box had other stuff. Man, I opened that box up. And I was just sad when I looked in there. All the resistors, dowels, capacitors. I said, I can't talk. What is this? I didn't realize it was a kit that had to be put together. Wow. I was really, really upset, man. Anyway, I finally got it put together. I probably had about the first heat kit in Atlanta. And like the guy said earlier on the show, if you had a thousand watts back then, you was a bad dude. Yeah. So I had a thousand back then. I was a bad dude. So they caught up with me with crab boxes, eight tubes. 
<laughs> all kind of stuff, man, but a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed all of that, man. And by the way, I've been hooked there ever since in CB radio because I met a lot of people and a lot of the people I met in radio and, and I will continue to meet them. If the good Lord keep me around, you know, so hey, right. man, I enjoyed it, man. Right. So like you being, you said 71, 72, or is that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. What do you remember? What what knowledge what knowledge can you bring to the to the platform of the Rooster Channel jumpers? Because we got so much when we had crack on, you know, I mean crack did an amazing job. And I mean he touched on so many, so many points. But in your in your words, in your opinion, in your knowledge, what what can you tell the platform about the Rooster Channel jumpers? Okay. Uh, man, let me tell you, that was a very interesting time with the Rooster Channel Jumpers, man. But the Rooster Channel Jumpers' main purpose was to uh, bring a lot of black sea beers together, you know, and be organized, you know, like in a uh, black radio organization. That's what they was really trying to do. And that's what they, uh, that's what they did. Uh, it was a hot lot of work. And it, and it started with a chapter up there. Well, it wasn't chapters then, but they put it together up in uh, Chicago. Uh, uh, Ned Woods, he's called his, his name was uh, Flagship, Flagship out of Chicago. They got it together, man. And what they would do, they would get together with a lot of the major cities. Phone bills were very high back then because you did a lot of calling, man. I did a lot of calling too, man. I'm long distance call back in the day. <laughs> I thought one time Sarah was going to put me out if she seen that phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's what happened, man. They got it together, man, where each, they would send bylaws to the major cities, to some of the guys that they talked to on the phone to get them to organize a club, a Russo Channel Jumper. So, that went on and they finally got it organized and, and uh, each each major city had their own chapter. They had their own members. We all had the same uniform. The uniform was blue, trimmed in gold with a rope over your left shoulder and a big red rooster right on the heart. Wow. wow. Beautiful uniform. Wait, man, you know, I, I put, a, I, I, I bought me some doggone combat boots, some jump boots. They had on spit shine when I put my uniform on. <laughs> but anyway, that was the thing, man. We enjoyed it, man. And um, the best thing, the one thing I can remember with the Rooster Channel Jumpers, man, is man back in 19, I think it was 1978, I believe it was. Wait, wait a minute, let me get it together here. We had our we had a national break, Rooster Channel Jumpers National Break. In Dallas, Texas. Okay. I have never in my life seen so many sea bills. Was they had over ten thousand people at that break. Okay. Wow. Okay. They had man, look here. All day long, buses was coming in from all over. People wow. trying to find motel. All the motels sold out. I think that was back in 1978 when that happened, man. But it was a wonderful break, and and a lot of the. Uh, See now, right now there is a uh, Rooster Channel Jumper chapter still around uh, up in Cincinnati. Uh, Cold Duck in Cincinnati. Yep. Uh, There's a Rooster Channel Jumper club there, and there are some others, man. But you know, I've been trying to call people to find out who's still around with this man. You know, man, since back then, a lot of us gone, bro. Right, a lot of us gone, different. man. And uh, it's hard to. Get a lot of information from way back there, man. I should have gathered the stuff all the way up, you know, but I didn't, man. But um, and that was in 78. We had that break in Texas. And um, some of the national officers that was in that, the national, they had national and we had regional, you know, breaks, uh, offices. Flagship out of Chicago, Ned Woods. He was the president. Now, this guy I know you guys know. Mr. Easy Rider Sr. Sure. One of the national secretaries. Rest in peace, Easy Rider. Yeah. Louisiana Slim out of Baton Rouge. He was one of the officers. Chicken Little was an officer. Mule Train Charlie was an officer. There's just a few of the guys that I can remember that was national officers with the Rooster Channel Jumper. But um, it was it was great, man. It was just, it was great. Now for the now for the young viewers, you know, you know. 
I'd say 50 years, 50 years of age and younger. I mean, when you say rooster channel jumpers, was, was it 30 people? Was it 40 people? Was it 15 people? No, 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 no. What, what do you mean? It's about in each, in each city? Well, when you say, when you say rooster channel jumpers, you're talking about a Wait, world. I'm, you're talking I'm about a, a. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm talking, when I said rooster channel jumpers, I'm talking about all of the rooster channel jumpers that was a rooster in any city, any of the major, any of the cities that they are, that they was organized in, wow. they was a member. You know okay. what I'm saying? So we okay. all, it was always, it was the locals, the locals had uh, breaks. They did things too. But when the national presented a break, everybody came together from all over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was yeah, this is this is man. this is deep. This is deep because I mean I'm only I'm only I'm you know I'm not I'm not from back then at that at that, that, that area at that time. So <laughs> you this, is a lot. this is a lot. We trying to we trying, trying to grasp it. <laughs> I, I'm trying I'm trying to grasp it. So you know okay so so if I wanted back then if I wanted to become a rooster channel jumper what would be the qualifications that I would have to meet to to, to get accepted yeah. into that yeah requirements into that club. Well, the requirements back then, man, you have you have to have a radio. You know, that was number one. You have a radio and and we would take your old, they would take your name, your address and all that stuff. And, and and you was in. It wasn't nothing that you had to go through. It wasn't a whole big process that you had to go through to be a member of the Rooster Channel Jumpers because we wanted be all of the black guys that was around. Let me tell you something, man. It was rough. See, the, I'm not having a long way to have here, but let me tell you something. Well, when I got on radio, all of the guys in Atlanta, talked on channel 11, okay? When I come on, when, when I left that walkie-talkie before I got a radio, I got my antenna with a some kind of way I can plug it up and ride around Atlanta with my walkie-talkie without letting the window down to let the air in out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, a lot of guys back then, man, let me tell you, we, we um, this is a long story, man. Everybody talked yeah, We got, we got, we, we're not okay. limited to time. Okay, everybody talked on Channel 11, okay? All right. I sit down and listen to Channel 11. I listen to it. Everybody, we have a good time through the middle of the week. Friday night, Saturday night, it was rough on Channel 11 because it was, we was being called burrheads, putch monkey, niggas. We was called everything you could be called on the radio. Right. And what the guys was doing in Atlanta, they waited Saturday night to try to fight with them, and that's what they did every Saturday. Every so I said, Man, that ain't me, you know, that ain't me, right? I'm not gonna do that. So I was from the channel, man, and I went down on channel six, and I hear these guys talking to other people, right? Guys, you know, I said, Hey, I like that. Then all of a sudden, the guys in Atlanta, like triple fours, 109, triple do. They would come down, but see, they had different names for the schedule of the FCC. Like Triple Fours, he was Triple Four on Channel Six. On Channel Eleven, he was Pitching Man. Right. So everybody had two different handles. So that's what would happen. So finally, man, I messed around and got me a 500 watt amplifier. I think it was a heck something. And I told the guy, "Look, man, I, I, I'm not doing this no more. I would not be back on Channel Eleven. I'm going down on Channel Six, man." He said, "Man, nobody gonna be down there, but quick." Now, Quick was a cab stand that uses Channel 6 as their business to operate the cabs. I said, well, that's all right. I'll just be down there with Quick. Because when Skip roll, I won't hear him anyway. So I went to 6, and that's why I stayed. So I changed my name from Rockets out to 777. So I did that. So I stayed on 777. I stayed there for a while, man. Skip roll. I talked, man. I had a Brian Eagle, and shoot, man, I had a good time, man. Nobody bothered me. <laughs> but the bottom line, go ahead. When you, when you, I'm just trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to run this in my head. So when you said that, basically, you said that you was more or less, you were, you had problems on 11, things, pressure, being called names, and a lot of animosity and, 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 and word displacements and just more or less hate, you know. Yeah. You guys was looking for a place to go to six and you found six. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying that well, I found six and then everybody else came, you know, but back then we didn't call it the Super Bowl. We just on channel six. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. You can put it that way. That's the way it was, man. Because that was not me, man. You know, I enjoy talking on radio. And there's one thing you all can, I can tell you right now, on this pro, right, right here on this program here, on the CB radio, on any radio that you hear me on, you will never hear me use a cuss word. You sure. know, this was not me. So I kind of went to six because that's, I felt like that was more like home. You know, I can enjoy it. And I've been here ever since, man. And I've met a lot of people from Channel 6. And I, oh, man, like I was saying earlier, man, when you put the um, put the fake, put the voice with a face, that's amazing. So whenever, so when everybody got, when most everybody, so a 6 got originated, we know now how it got originated. So 6 is originated. What, when, when you, when you, when you was, when you was established on 6, what was there more to the story? What was attracting to you on six once you started off in your in your CB career? Okay, which this really what attracted me. I was at one of my friend's house, and they used to like triple deuce and four eleven. They used to have they had their station in the attic, man. You had to go up these ladders, man, in the attic, and he's talking on the radio, right? So I thought I was doing good because everybody was coming back to me. But as I left his house, I was coming down those stairs and I heard them say, and I was on triple seven, ain't nothing but a duck. He a mud duck. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so it can't be. He ain't getting across the street. The next day, I went straight to the credit union. I said, I bet I get across the street next week. <laughs> so, I mean, then I find out it was competitive. You have, you know, competitive, but you have to keep it. Keep it like it's supposed to be. You have fun with it. You can be competitive with fun. You ain't got to be competitive with a gun, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So would you, would you, from what you experienced back then to what you're seeing now in your words, what do you, what do you think, what do you think's going on? Look, it's, it's power, power, power now. You know, it's, you know, we got guys uh, probably, Never been a radio a month, man. They might come in with a ten thousand watts, and and they uh, then they they know they demand, they think they demand, and then somebody take them out with a thousand watts, and then they mad. You know, it, it's <laughs> knowledge, man. You got to have it's knowledge. It's you, it's, you got to have that. You got to be in it for a while to get that. Now, now I would ask, ask, you know, my main thing is anybody that's listening right now and they're getting ready to come in radio, make sure that uh, you are able to talk what you live at. But you go out and spend, man, ten, fifteen thousand dollars man, and get home and kill about four time, four or five times, and your neighbors, your neighbors will stop you from talking. You might not believe that, but they can cut your radio clean off. So all the thing you do is look in that radio room and wave at it. Did I lag? He's still no, talking on my end. No, you, so y'all lost me? No, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You, you're good. You, you y'all y'all just put you want me to hit this foot pedal? No, don't don't hit the foot pedal. Don't hit the foot pedal. You you were still talking. Your lips had stopped on my end, but your lip you 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 your, your <laughs> lips it was it was it was weird. It threw me for a loop. But uh in, in your in your words, do you feel like like okay, like you've been around, you you know what I'm just gonna go, but like do you feel like there's a lot of guys out there on the C Super Bowl on 27025? Do you feel like they try too hard? Do you feel like they just try too hard to, to get the lingo, to get to get the game? I mean, what do you think about that? No, I don't I don't I don't, I don't think I don't think they come on trying to try too hard to get the game. I, I really I don't know. I don't think they really do on that. But you know, you got some guys that come on, man, they uh yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to tell nobody to run their station. I made a mistake doing that here in Atlanta, man. I told the guy, you may ask to look well. I was trying to help him, but I helped him in the wrong way because I think he got the wrong impression of what I was telling him because he did a lot of cursing and stuff on the radio. And mm -hmm. and, and and I can imagine, you know, next door, here's a family sitting there with their kids, man, and, and they got music and stuff on, and he just got next door come in with all this, all this foul language, you know? Yeah. And I was saying, man, you need to, you know, don't do that, man. Kind of cut that out. I was trying to save him on that, but he took it the wrong way. As mm -hmm. if I was trying to tell him how to run his radio station. And then when you look at it on another side, that's what I was doing. So I don't do that no more, that right? Yeah, you can't tell nobody. You can't tell nobody can't tell really them. how to run their radios. I mean, uh, uh, even though we might not like, 
you know, I might not like how you talk on the radio. You might not like how I talk on the radio, but my game is my game. Your game is your game, I guess. That's but true. That's true. Do, That's do true. you feel like, do you feel like, what's your opinion on the water gates and stuff? Do you feel like people pay too much attention to these water gates and put too much focus in these water gates versus talking on the radio? Yes. There are some people that does that, man. There are some people that, um, you know, you can have a QSO, man. You can be down in, in that Florida, man. And you got to have on somebody down in Florida and somebody don't want to get in there, man. Instead of them with a conversation, they're going to go in shootout mode. There's a lot of guys go in shootout mode just to hear their voice on a, on a, on a, on a playback. You know, one, 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 one. I was in there, man. One, 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 one. You know, what is that? <laughs> yeah. 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 It, 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 a lot of people does it. Some people don't, you know, but, uh, that, you know, it's going to be like that. There's so many, you know what, what, what I like right now, there are a lot of people still interested in this hobby and a lot of people are still talking on the radio and a lot of people still spend a lot of money in this stuff, you know, so we still here. Still here. Still yes, here. We still here. Yeah. There's, there's, I mean, you got a lot, there's a lot of forums out there. A lot of information's mm -hmm. getting brought to the table. You got, you got, you got forums, you know, everybody's sharing the water gates, everybody, you know, I mean, even back in, in 10, 11, 12, you know, when, when I first, you know, chimed in the pow talk, you know, the belts was a big thing, the belts yeah. given out and stuff. Yeah. I mean, what, I what, what, <laughs> yeah, you, you remember the belts when, yeah, when, the belt the came, belts, when the belts man. came to the band, in your opinion, like, what did you what did you see with the egos and the animosity and the comp and the competitive that brought with the belts? What do you think about that? I think the belts was a great idea. You know, the belts were in my opinion, the belts was for people to really get their station together and try to earn one. You know what I mean? Push. But yeah. then a lot of but I don't I think it kind of I don't know, man. It was a lot of stuff happening that man, and people didn't the man that created started doing the belts, he was doing it for something good. But a lot of people that got in it, they, they tried to do it another way, you know. But I think I think that was a great thing, man, with those belts, man. And you have to respect, you know what? You didn't get no belt running on Honda Watts. You know, you got to respect the guys that got the belts, man. And I do. All the guys that received the belt, man, my respect is to them. No doubt about that. Because right. they, they, they put the work in and they got the belt. They earned it. You got to right. earn it. They earned it. Yes, sir. They earned it. Like so yes. we, uh, uh, Swamp Weed, say, uh, favorite saying, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. Yeah, too. You got to pay the cost, pay the to, cost be the to be the boss. <laughs> Shout out to Swamp Weed for that legend comment. <laughs> Hello, Swamp Weed. Good evening to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you got anything, Vinny? Or what? Oh, oh shout, no. to Swamp shout out to yeah, Swamp Weed. <laughs> 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 hey, um, hey, you went into a daze when I, yeah, when I started talking about uh, swamp weed. You went into a daze over there. I was, I was, ready, I was ready to hit my foot pedal right now. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was already step on the foot you pedal. Missed, hey, 36 years of that day. Not the yeah. swamp weed, for real. Real talk. Yeah, you no, I mean, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, Godfather, I mean, you got so much knowledge. I mean, we could talk this for two, three hours and laugh yeah, and yeah. drink tea and drink coffee and be here until six in the morning, you know, I, I mean, know, but there's, there's a whole lot of stuff, man. I, I just right now, you know, when you uh, like tomorrow, I'll be thinking a lot of things when I could have could have brought to the table. But, you know, right now, I just can't, you know, I just can't come up. I've been, but I've been around so long. The I was in radio. I got in radio, I, I got out of radio. Me and King Snake talk about this a lot. King State said, yeah, you know, uh, I've been here from the time. See, I remember when uh, I was talking to Skip, when King Snake and Jack of Diamond came on the radio. I was already out there. Wow. Those guys moved on up, man. You know what I'm saying? The King of the South. I was oh, talking yeah. to him. Yeah, man. He, he, uh, he, he, uh, he's, he's been there. He was telling me, he said, yeah, you know, GF said, you, uh, you left radio for about 20 years. I, and he, yeah, that was true. Like I came in the radio man in 71, I think 85, I got out of radio because we moved. And where I moved, I couldn't put a tower up. So yeah. instead of me putting all of my radio equipment in storage, I said, man, you want to, I just saw it, man. I got rid of it. And on, now how I got, and this is how I got back in radio. Check this out. Big Motor called me. He, Big Motor, you know what? Let me tell you about Big Motor. I met him years ago in Detroit. He was calling himself Motor Man. Motor Man. Yeah, I went to his house. He, and, that's and the one he, I was in Vegas and moved down to Georgia, right? Yes, yes, okay. that's him. That's him. Right. I went to his house, man, up in Detroit. There was a breakup in Detroit, man. I went up to the break, man. I went by his house, and he was talking on a Johnson transmitter, Johnson 500. 
and he would make it, you know, feedback on the receiver, you know, like that, right? I looked at him, man, I said, like that. He said, man, it was a transmitter. I said, I'm going to get me one of them. So when I came back to Atlanta, I went and bought me a back and two transmitter. And I was doing the same thing that he was doing, you know, making feedback and all this stuff. Then I ended up getting a Collins transmitter. And I talked on that Collins until I got out of radio because it didn't drift. The drums would drift off frequency, but Collins would just stay right there. And I, I enjoyed that radio. But let me tell you, that guy uh, told me a lot. He used to talk all the time, man. He told me a lot about radio. He sure did, man. But, uh, but you know, well, you never, you, ne you never have to worry about, you said a while ago, you never have to worry. You know, you said that you'd wake up tomorrow morning and you'd probably hate the fact that you didn't ask certain questions and this yes. and that. I tell yeah. you, man, listen, we can all do that because none of us are professionals. You know, when we're trying to, we're all we're doing is just trying to log some history and get some, some files and some cabinets here to where we got something from 15 years that somebody can come back to. So, I mean, there's no professionalism that, that we has to be set in stone. I mean, but I can't tell what you've been in there and done, right, you know, right, but we have right. to hear it from you, you know, but mm -hmm. basically just wanted to get you in here, sit around the table and, you know, just kind of get the rooster channel jumpers and get them kind of pinpointed down. Cause I got so many, I got so much feedback from the viewers about the rooster channel jumpers, jumpers and who were they and what were they and what did they stand for and where did they come from and how did the bowl start? You know, and I mean, we pretty much touched on that. Now, anybody with, with common sense, you know, can take what you said the way you said it and they can understand where it went and how it and, and how it got laid down and formatted. So, I mean, I think I think I think what you did, you know, you're bringing it to the table the way you brought it to the table. Hats off to you, my brother. Well, I thank you very much, man. And um, and I, uh, one more thing I'd like to say, I mentioned that there, there are Rooster Channel Jumpers chapters that's, that's out there now. Only one I can remember is the one that's in Cincinnati, Ohio. But there are others that still still out here. And I just couldn't find them. But once I find out where they are, I will let you know. I call you and say, so, look, man, there are some other uh, chapters, Rooster Challenge Jumpers that still exist at this day. And I'll let you know on that. Yeah, man. Hey, real quick, I just want to get a couple questions in for Mr. Godfather, if you don't mind. Uh, simple Go questions ahead. here. Um, do the rooster, this question's from, oh, man, I lost it. Uh, Donald Fulcher. I don't know his handle. But he said, do the rooster jumper uh, channel jumpers whistle yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and can you, and can you can you yeah. can you watch your lips real quick yeah. And do <laughs> yeah we used to whistle man uh but we used to whistle all day long man this guy um uh, yeah, everybody, we, we still whistle man i don't know more you can't do it no more no, I can't whistle no more, man. We used to whistle, <laughs> man. Uh, Jack Diamond, Jack of Diamond was talking about that the other day. He said when he first got on radio, and I had been talking skip. When I went off, I whistled the national anthem. Oh wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Wow. He said he would never forget that. You know? <laughs> we used to whistle, man. That's that's, that's uh, raw town. Running tree, running tree out of St. Louis. He had one the best. Oh, he was a rooster. See things coming back now. Running, <laughs> running tree out of St. Louis. That man could whistle. Oh my goodness, he had a little <laughs> melody with his whistle, man. You know, mine was just like, mm, you know. But uh, <laughs> his was great, man. I, yeah, we whistled, man. I told you back. Asked that question. You were back there. You were back there too. You owe us <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> we got another question from uh, Fred and more Fred. Who Fred, who do you okay. think it, who do you think your biggest competitor is coming up and coming up? Through all these years, who do you think was their biggest competitor? That's from Fred and more Fred out of Connecticut. A competitor that's coming out of Georgia talking skip. That's what yes, you're talking about. And we're talking about, you know, we we get in your opinion because man, when we think of Georgia, man, we think you know, you sir king of the south, oh, all yeah. power, derail. There's a lot of heavy hammers out there, Some but heavy hammers, who's, man. who's your but, they just want to know who your competitor was. I, I don't me, I don't have no competitors coming out of Georgia. I know what to do. <laughs> I, <wish they> <laughs> I like that. See that, Jimmy? <laughs> I don't wait till they I mean, he, stop. Talking, he ain't never lying. Yeah, I don't wait till they stop. Man, the king of the south can control their ways. Ebony the King can control their ways. D Rail can control their ways. Jack and Diamond can control it. You know, call who out there. Tonight. All these guys has great stations, man. You know, I never had one of those huge stations. I have always had a good talking station. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I am now. I have a talking station, but would, I, I would, don't fight. Would it, 
Would it be fair to say that when you built your station, you didn't build it, you know, to whoop another man? You just built it to where a man couldn't whoop you? Well, oh, let me show you. Yeah, you never. Any new guys getting ready to come on right now, never do this. Never, ever build a station to whoop anybody. Because you're going Can you lose. repeat that just one more time, please? Never, ever build a station to whoop anybody. Because you're going to lose. You're going to cost you a lot of money to build it, and you're going to be very dissatisfied when you get your butt whooped. Because of what? Way. Lack of, ex would you say lack of experience? That's number one, lack of experience. You you can to make because you've got watch. You're not can to make because you have the condition. You can to right. make because you bought this stuff. You can to make to, to put the name out there because you done bought, you done spent this money. So you want your name out there. But uh, it ain't your turn to burn. Hmm. You get whooped. Right. Smart comments so you, from a smart man. You got you got another comment? <laughs> I said that's a smart comment from a smart oh. man. But I got oh. another another somebody wanted to know if you uh remember toolbox out of the big band. Oh yes, I remember toolbox, man. Toolbox used to come to the brakes on the limousine, sitting in the back seat with a shovel driver. <laughs> Yeah, I remember two boss. <laughs> yeah, two boss, a great guy. He was a great guy, man. I remember two boss. I sure do, man. All the guys down in the back, I remember them, man. Muse, uh, 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 what's the guy's name? Um, uh, I, I can't name him. I know all of them, man. I remember mm -hmm. when um uh, Shaggy Dog with the Commodores. He was down in the, him and uh Clyde. Clyde he played uh, uh Robin Hood. I remember all those guys. They was in Tuskegee. They still, you know, they was on the show, man. But um. Uh, I remember all those guys back in the day. Wow. So it's it's all like, man, you you was you was hosting breaks when I came into the into the <laughs> click. You yeah. know, I mean, for 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 what you've been around and for what you've done and 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 hosting breaks and being a part of different clubs and helping different clubs, do you think you've accomplished most of all you've wanted to accomplish or what you set out to accomplish? Yes. I really do, man. Uh, I have, I, you know, I like one thing. I like to have them. I love the microphones, man. I love to talk on the radio. I love to talk on the microphone. I love the MC. And I was like that in high school. I sure was. And I had told my mom, I said, I'm going to our radio station. She said, okay. <laughs> there, and there, I, and there, I, I did it. I, I got a job in here. And then here in Atlanta, WAOK, -okay, man, at a radio station. And I enjoyed every minute of that. I started out working in news. And um, then I ended up working as a part-time DJ and stuff like that. But uh, it was a lot. How many? How many? How many years would you say you got in commercial broadcast? Probably twelve. Only twelve years, man, and I got out of it. Yeah. Well, I went to radio. <laughs> that was an amazing thing. I went to radio school here in Atlanta. That's where I graduated. I graduated from one of the radio schools here in Atlanta, and uh, I had a problem with my uh, advisor because. You had to write a show, and the next morning you come in, and we were going to air. We had a we had a transmitter that ran off. Uh, you remember you know those big old uh, flashlight batteries? Oh, the mag lights. You talking about the mag lights? The, the little flashlight batteries, the round flashlight batteries. <laughs> our, I don't know. You might be past my here. <laughs> <laughs> our transmitter, our transmitter ran off those batteries, man, and you can hear us about two blocks from the uh, school. You had to write your show. You bring it in. When it's time you to go in the air, the show that you wrote, you give it to the uh, to your to your teacher. Then you go in and go in the air. You do your show for one hour. I would come out of the show and I flunked everything. <laughs> you know why? Everything that I wrote that night before that I gave to him when I went in the studio, it was nothing on that paper <laughs> that I said on the air. It went out the window. Because <laughs> I could, you know, and everything I did on there was tight, perfect. Everything was right. All the live commercials were straight. But I didn't do nothing because I went, the, the music that I had to play that last night, I didn't feel like that the next day. So it, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. had a problem doing that, man. He said, he didn't see how I could do it, you know, but that's the way it was. That was yeah. a lot of fun. So I've been around in microphones for a long time, man. That's awesome. But it's nothing like CB radio. Right. Me, I love it.
Rook, another quick question. This is from 249 out of South Carolina. He said, uh, are you surprised that something out of necessity going to the bowl, Channel 6, turned into the largest CB followings? And uh, what else? And uh, and has broken racial barriers and has left – and you guys such as yourself has – have left a CB legacy that will last a lifetime. Are, are, are you excited that something out of necessity going to the bowl has broken all racial barriers now in, in 2023? I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, repeat, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm glad to have everybody down the bowl. You know, you know, um, there are a lot of people that's down here. I don't, repeat that question because I, I don't, I didn't get that. Oh, he, he asked, are you surprised? That's something out of necessity. And I remember how you guys had to go to Channel 6? Yeah. Turned into the largest CB following now presently and has broken racial barriers and you guys doing so. I, hey, man, that that's is beautiful. I, you know, that, that's great. I think I think he's right. on. I think that's correct on that, man. Uh, I think racial barriers has been broken. And I think the guys is on the Super Bowl now, man. It's Everybody's enjoying it, you know. I, you don't hear a whole bunch of crap. You know what I'm saying? Every yeah. now and then, you it's an idiot going to be somewhere all the time. <laughs> but you know, but overall, nope. I think I think I think uh, the Super Bowl is doing great. You know. Well, Wait, I mean, go ahead, go ahead, Jim. I, no, I just I have to put this in there. You know, I mean, because it's just it's just the way I feel. I feel like okay, so if you come into an all African American hobby. You know, not 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 as far. I'm talking about the bowl. I'm talking about the bowl. So everybody that that it, when you think of the bowl, you you know and understand that it's it's based on African American radio operators. So if you have Caucasian guys that want to come to that bowl, no, I would say 99.9 percent .9 of those dudes that's on the radio and on that channel, they want to be there. You know, they want to, they want, however they got to do, if their game's off, if their swagger's not being, or if it's not on point, but the four, the five, or the seven that is there, they want to be there. And it's the same, and I've always said that in Pow Talk, too. If they're in Pow Talk and they're affiliating with the group, then you got to step back and you got to say, those guys want to be here. I agree. I agree. And, and, and what it boils down to, I don't care what color you are, if you end my radio, I'm talking them back to you. That's 100. That's 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 the name of the game. You know, yep. you, you don't have time to think about what color nobody is. If the guy is in your radio, you either talk to him or you're not going to talk to nobody else because he's going to plug your ears up anyhow. So. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you, uh, you wouldn't want to be me the other day because I called a guy up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was shopping on I was shopping for the show and I mean the first question that guy asked me he said he said he said he said, he said, he said what what are you are you a Democrat or Republican Oh my goodness <laughs> No, 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 no when I called you up when I called you up that's not what I asked you The first no. question I asked you is I said Godfather this is the platform this is our show I said would you be willing to entertain this idea. I said, yep. can I explain it to you? Can I take the time? And you said, yes, sir. I want to yes. hear it. I and I told you, it, I said, don't take my word for it. Don't take 413th <laughs> word. Go and look at, go and look at the, 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 the past shows all the way back to the preview, you yeah. know, and that's exactly what you did, you know? So, you know, I, I looked at all of those shows, man. I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed you and crack. I enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the one other night, man. Foxy, oh yeah. man. It was, it was, it was awesome. Foxy. Man. Yeah. Bob, yeah. Miss Foxy. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you a story about that. Okay. Come check on. this out. Come on. Her uh, daughter's up in here, by the way. Oh yeah. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> but anyway, uh -huh. we was at a break. I can't remember where it was, but you man, he's a rider. God bless the day. And he's, me and he's around always, but together it breaks. So we was out there talking one day, and Miss Fox was doing something to somebody's amplifier. And she, when she stopped talking, Easy started talking to her, and he introduced me to her. So, I, you know, I was glad to meet her. We was talking. So he looked at me, he's a guy about, you know, a lot of guys got technicians. But there ain't nobody got a technician like I got it. What you mean? He said, I can kiss my technician. <laughs> I'd be damned. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, right you got a fun there. <laughs> no, it, it really was to have to have her, you know, and I mean 413, he did a he did an excellent job interviewing her. You know, I kind of sure leaned back did. on that. Because yeah, I did. just, you know, I I don't know a lot about DC stuff, you know. 
I, when I came into it, I came into AC. So I just kind of leaned back in the knowledge that she brought to the table as being a female and, and, and a box builder at that and what she had accomplished. I mean, it was just, it was mind blowing to me, but it was, it was a great, it was a great time to be present with her. Yeah. Well, and, you know, getting back to, to you guys coming in and uh, uh, like you said, now we got a lot of people. We got the guys from Puerto Rico where I started on 26715. You got a lot of guys from Puerto Rico from the islands coming on the bowl. You got a, guy, a lot of guys from Bermuda, the Blue Waters, you know, uh, Barbados. Now in the morning time down here in Florida, I don't know what you listen to in, in Georgia over in Atlanta, but sometimes you could turn your beam like if you're going northeast and I could hear the guys in Scotland talking on the bowl, hollering mm -hmm. for us guys, you know. So that's oh, yeah. that, there's a whole new plethora that I – They've been there, but we really haven't really recognized them. The guys in Australia, Hippopotamus, all the yeah. guys down there, they're coming, you know, Hawaii. So it's kind of open. You guys open, paved the way for pretty much everybody to get on the band as long as we do some good talking. Now, I got a question from old Pocket Chains. He said, what's the difference between a good five and a bad five? What's the difference between what? A good five and a pass five being, pa uh, being passed uh, off. Well, uh, a good five and a pass five. Oh, I tell you what it is. There's no difference. It's a five. Mm. You can accept it however you want it, but it's a five. You know when you and key your mate, if the guy told you, hey, tell God to us a good morning, that's a friendly five, dog, no, that's a five. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. That's a five. a five. It's no difference. It's a five. But what you do, you swing it up and say it's a friendly five. Yeah. It's not, it's not a, it's, you know. It's a five. I'm a friend of five. <laughs> let me let me let me ask you this: Will you will you roll most of all fives, or is there just some fives you're not going to pass? Some fives I'm not going to pass, man. Yeah. Uh, I have guys tell fives to tell me to tell somebody a whole bunch of stuff, man. I I'll tell them on the airways, man. I don't pass fives like that, man. You know, right. I'm not going to pass a five that go. I'm not going to pass no dirty five to nobody. Right. You know, I tell them, hello, welcome to the weekend, hello, all this stuff. You know, some funny fives I would pass, as long as it's not an uh, 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 ugly, dirty five that's going to degrade somebody. I'm, I'm not going to pass them. I told who I was talking to. Oh, me, me and Craig was talking. I can tell Craig, because me and him talked about this. Craig told me to tell a dude to do something. I said, Craig, do you realize who you're talking to? I said, man, don't pass, don't pass fine like that. He said, hell, I know you weren't going to pass it. You ain't going to pass it. King Snake won't pass it. And every king won't pass them kind of fine. But I'm going to say it again anyhow. There you go. There you <laughs> yeah, go. I ain't going to pass it, man. You know? in, in your words, you know, I mean – I'm, I'm probably mostly everybody that, that comes on the show and be a part of this. I have to, I have to put this out there because there's a very, this is a very, this is a, it's, this means something to me when I ask this because nobody's promised tomorrow. That's in, 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 in your words, I mean, what, what would you want to be remembered as and, and thought as of a CB operator of the bowl, you know, kind of like a, what, what, what do you, what do you want to be remembered as? I like to remember as uh, one of the nicest guys on radio, a guy that's, you know, just plain. Uh, you know, I love I love people, and I like people. I think people that love me when I'm around them and talk to them. I'm a guy that I'm not going to hurt anybody, and I don't want anybody to hurt. I just want guys to remind, just remember me as one of the nicest guys on the radio. You know? Right. And you feel like you've accomplished pretty much everything that you wanted yes. to do and set out to do on the yes. radio. Yes. On There's nothing phone. else I can do on radio, but what I'm doing right now, I can't put no bigger amplifier over here. <laughs> That's <laughs> not going to work. I ain't getting ready to move at 75. So, hey, I've done everything I could do. Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, hey, I mean, like I say, I want to thank you one more time for taking the time, picking up the phone call, and thank you for not asking me if I was a Democrat or a Republican. <laughs> that was that man. I, I, I could talk about that for weeks. I just, I, who, who, I mean, I just say hey, from where I come from and where I was born. I mean, man, you just that, that's a crazy question to ask somebody. <laughs> I'm still on the young version anyway, so there's a lot of stuff that I think different of. But you know, listen, man, super ten eight dude. Man, you're a role model. You're somebody to look up to. 
Uh, you know, I've seen, like I say, when I when I come into the breaks, I mean, you were the first person I look up there. You're all suited up, GQ clean, and and man, your talk game's dead on point, and and you run those breaks, and you're you're a good talk host. I mean you're somebody that I can learn something from. So I just want to personally thank you for coming on our show. Okay. Well, one thing I want to say, I want to thank, I want to thank you. I want to thank your wife and everybody that helped to get me on, uh, the producer that helped to get me on. Cause I, I was having some problems over here. I kind of got to figure it out. And y'all helped me figure it out. Anything. I want to thank them. And by the way, um, I will see you guys. I would be down in Augusta too. Okay. I'll be I'm seeing that break okay. in Augusta. So uh, okay. I see awesome. you all there, man. And I thank you all very much. And I think you got a great show going on. And thank I'm you. not going to miss them, man. Y'all take Appreciate care of yourself. It. Yo, man, y'all so do a we, great job. So we thank you. We thank you for coming on because we've been reaching out to a couple guys, older guys, and they're like, well, let me see how it goes. You know, see, you know, I think they're scared we're going to put them in a trick bag or something and start talking. <laughs> to them. But what we really are trying to do is get the history of the bowl and you you pretty much summed up the channel rules, so we really appreciate that. Great host, and man, love the voice. What is it, GN Network? What, how do you, what is it that you always say? GVN, the Golden Voice Network. <laughs> Click. There you go. There you have it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on. Right, God bless. You. God bless no, you, God Father. Take care, man. Take care. Right. Man, what an awesome, what an awesome man, bro. What an awesome operator. What an awesome man. And a plethora of information, man. That, that's some good stuff, bro. A lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. You know what I mean? I just sit back and I just, I mean, I mean, as these shows just more, as these shows roll, I'm getting more and more comfortable. I'm getting more and more relaxed, you know, and I'm, you know, kind of learning is, is, is where we're going. And this would, this is a learning, a learning process for me, a learning process for you. But the, the knowledge that some of these guys got, and if, if some of the older guys are in the room and you're watching this show, the, now you see what we're doing and you see this is not a trick bag. This ain't Jimmy from Pow Talk, you know, even though I got a photographic mind and you tell me, you know, that, <laughs> you know, you was down there at the sugar mine and all this shit. And I really know you was out there doing this and doing that. Okay, we're going to shut you out. I'll leave all that alone. You're safe here. You're safe here. <laughs> you're safe here. You're safe here. You know, I, you're safe till a certain time. Till, you know, I might park and go that way, but I'll announce it when I get ready to go that way. But I don't forget shit. Don't ever forget that. I don't forget shit. So if you say something, it goes in my brain. So I will use it against you at a point in time. For sure, man. Hey, well, uh, thanks for joining in, guys. Appreciate y'all. Next week, we're going to have some uh, good guests also. And, uh, man, just super excited. He was weak, please. He be we're going to catch y'all later. G's, and now they threatening folks to get Thank fat. Thank you for your ass when I get to yeah, the hood. Yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to step out of here. Everybody, shout out to Prime Minister. Shout out to the United Kingdom. Shout out to all the boys in Puerto Rico. Shout out to Barbados. Shout out to the Bahama Islands, the Grand Bahamas. Shout out to the Grand Bahamas. Shout out to the Grand Bahamas. The Cold War is here. Who's your idol? Everybody's upgrading, waiting for the cycle, buying DBI and skull cracker beans, big bluegill amps, and Dave May things. And Ghost Rider Maiders hitting Florida streets, big CC maids and sneaky peeps, them getaway drivers and the trouble maids. It's for the love of the game, nobody getting paid. We build weapons. You pay or keep stepping. To get that more, you keep stretching. They say CB stands are constantly broken, constantly buying, so start buying and quit crying, duck. Complaints of a paper boss. Y'all talks to y'all's friends and put it in pal talk. And to avoid the gates, here's your 99. I can't afford a computer, hard time. But you run a 3CX, $1,500,000 motor home, staying clean. The truth, if you own the computer, you will hear the evidence and know your future. Cause every day you're gonna get skull dragged by the same panel wagon with the rusted mags. I apologize for pulling your duck card, but I understand, man. Cause the hammer hits hard. I don't wait on thing. I never wait on another man. A groundhog. I got a first lady and she's one beautiful black woman. 
strong black woman. So I wait on no Kevin Bacon man, Mr. No Pity, me in, in Virginia. Big man on a big man radio is right here, right back, break a break This is the Super Bowl. It's where the bosses roll. It's full of superstars and handlers. Yes, so hard. This is the Super Bowl. It's where the bosses roll. It's full of superstars and handlers. Yes, so hard. Now there's a lot of clicks among us. What the game done brung us? A whole lot of bosses and mud runners. So I'ma break it all down. And if you fit one of these clicks, go on and be proud. You got bullies, big boys, mud ducks, and heavy hitters. Got a brand new click called the Bully Killers. Got the 50 foot Nova Club. These beans is big, but them quiet boys is hating us. John Deere is the leader of the plastics, cobras, and galaxies. Love him because he brings heat. But I'm a member of the broadcast click. These glow in the dark boat anchors is the shit. Mean pill and the big white boys To hell with electric bills, they bring in the big noise Can't forget about the crybabies Always crying about conditions in your position Now quit bitching And the bass killing mobile They be creeping around the hood Hitting water and big hills Plus the hoop and holla click They yelling one, 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 one worldwide Then they split Why? Because the amps break down Got the carrier turned up The nose plug sound Crack Carter is the leader of the tram nation And if you got a station Key it up The hammer hits hard I ain't playing with Lucky Star I ain't playing with all power I ain't playing with none of these other things They gotta recognize They gotta recognize They gotta recognize We get away from the come out this gold coast And I come down here to the 30 30 And the same little show And I ain't playing Get away from the West Coast Technology Technology I accomplished my mission I got you put on the water gate I'ma cut it, paste it, and send it to crime All they can make an answer the number one bully at Detroit. Have a good day. Hey, make it mob. You need to fix your audio because it's not right. Mr. Golden Numbers are getting on down. Jim got condition. Oops, did I do that? I should have mentioned 